what was I going to say? One of my favorite, favorite um, mm. weather widget app. It's called HT Widgets. It's discontinued, oh, yeah. and I paid for it a yeah. long, long time ago. And every time I transfer it from one phone to the other, and people like see it on my desk, on my home screen, they're like, "Hey, which, what's that app?" And I'm like, it's one. HD Wood. Yeah, it doesn't exist. So I ex I extracted the APK from I, the last phone it, it I had. It kills me because like we we have to have those conversations about like archiving some of this stuff. There, exactly. My, my all time favorite tower defense game comes from a company that went belly up years ago, <laughs> and basically pulled the plug. So you can't play it. Yeah. On anything mobile and there was a pc port of the first tower defense game mm -hmm. but like even that's really dicey and hard to find and the best way to play it was on a phone so i'm gonna i i, I have it installed like it was funny is well, i have it on my razor phone too <laughs> and like i'm not touching my razor phone too until i can figure the, out some way and the hope of, is that, that it actually installs on something newer than uh, android 10 because that's the other thing it's uh Depending on the SDK it was written in, you you might not be able to install Honestly, it on something newer. I, I don't think it's going to work because it was one of those old games where you installed the game, uh -huh. and then you had to download a data file uh, for like they, okay, and like, maps and stuff okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So like PUBG so and Call I'm of Duty, just, yeah, they don't actually download yeah, the entire I'm game. Proper screwed. I think it's uh, just dead. No, well, hello just, everybody. Hey, I'm show. sorry. Yeah, crap. I didn't realize we started. Uh, welcome back to the best of our week, where we always start talking about something and. Then realize this show started. Really, this is just my and TK's excuse to catch up as we're pals. And it we is. enjoy chatting with everybody else in, in the live stream in the chat, too. But yes. we're, no, we're no, old absolutely. and uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're now in possession of technology that is ancient. And unfortunately, uh, uh, we we can't. Well, well, we have to let go of some of these things. Uh, there, are, there is, yeah, and I and I'm sure at some point that widget that I like is, is not going to install on 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 set. Right. Luckily, right now it still works on Android 13. And again, this has uh, been years. Wa watch it be watch it be the carryover next year with Android 14. And I think Qualcomm and MediaTek are going to be discontinuing support for older and 32-bit apps. Uh. I, yeah, and then why? And then watch it be only sixty four stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. It's a shame just... we should be able to reach out to those companies and say like, "Hey, if you're not going to do anything with this, if you're going to give up this IP, or if you're yeah, just why let don't it you go. just release the code? Yeah, put it, put it, yeah. put it on GitHub, man. There's let, no let, let it be FOSS. <laughs> exactly. Let yeah. somebody pick it up and uh, make make life with it. Um, but jumping right in, I just want to shout out a couple names. We got Greg, we got yeah. Barry, Marilyn, Ron Guido, Farhan, Oliver, Ma uh, Malik, or Malik. I, I'm almost always positive I'm saying your name wrong, and I apologize. Gabaletta, um, we already got a good crew starting here. I don't know about you, man, but considering we're leading up into summer, <laughs> we already did Google I.O. Yep. We've got WWDC around the corner, but... In a couple weeks, yep. Just there's been so much activity on accessories and computers yep. and... Uh, Computex is around the corner. I like I've been reading up on GPU news. Apparently, yeah, I, Nvidia's 4060 is a total dud. I mean, like I, I there's just been so it, much. The 40 to get series. Through. There's so much drama around the 40 series, like more so than any of the other series that I've seen. But yes, yes, the 4060 is like a, 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 a basically a dead on arrival. There's no <laughs> like, like skip and go straight to 4070 uh, or 4090 because apparently the well, 4080 that's just it. has 40, even problems. So if you can find a 4070, it I think that's actually getting discontinued. Oh, like, I think oh because they came out with be... the TI. Yeah, that's right. They, it, it, see, that was the weird thing. Like, why would you release the 4070 and the 4070 TI so close to each other? Like, that makes no sense, right? Like, you would give it at least a breathing room. Let people think they can try to find the 4070 before you put the TI in. But, but also, no, I know. like, it, it's so funny because you go into, like, the 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 hardcore gearhead PC yeah. builders. Like, I still I still feel like I've got a tangential like thread of a relationship with that world just from i mean you and i have always built our own pcs but like yeah, no. from having worked at newegg and really gotten in deep with with those uh with that crew the foundry um, over there it, yeah it, it's funny like they have their own tinfoil hat conspiracy theories we have ours in the worlds of phones and smartwatches. we're going to get into some of that when we start talking about this dude i want to talk about this i want to talk so about much it. to talk about there i've been wearing but, this for the last but, few weeks and hoping nobody recognizes that it looks like a different one but like nobody said anything so yeah no, I, I guess i guess we were hiding in plain sight both of us like i just didn't want to dude a whole bunch of tech i was hanging out with a whole bunch of our tech friends last week and not one person picked up on the fact that this is different nope. they just look at it as a thick watch and they're like 
Oh yeah, tick watch, yep. dual display, fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. But the, the the best theory I said, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this. The best theory I caught from the PC builders was NVIDIA overcommitted to 30 series supply and is positioning 40 series parts to help sell off inventory with their partners on the 30 series. And then we'll see the prices that are supposed to be appropriate for these 40 series parts once we start hearing rumblings of the 50 series launch later. And that so they're always... playing sixth dimensional chess. With, yeah, I was uh, like, yeah, anytime you think you're... purposely <laughs> tanking the interest in these now, and then it'll seem like such a good bargain next year when you can get a 4060 for $250. And you're yeah. like, I, I, I don't know that I buy that. <laughs> I, well, but the problem is, like, it, it, it may make sense to a small number of people, but for the for the uh, I don't know what I was gonna say for the basically for the for the chase the the people that chase the latest and greatest GPU and they want the best and everything and want to be able to play everything, but they're not gonna go for a, a you know a thirty series from well, last year just to try to the the according to the Steam survey, yeah. someone please correct me. I'm sure someone has this memorized. I think that the most uh, the most used graphics card is a 1660 which is sort of oh. like an evolution of a 1060 yeah yeah, yeah. i remember um, oh it's man. similar it's not exactly the same but it's a like gtx the GT, a gtx yeah yeah the GTX, yeah 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 um, i remember those but that, like, the GTX. yeah I, I don't know that there are many I, I think the only card in the top 10 I, i'm trying to do this from memory and i know i'm wrong i think the only card in the top 10 up uh, sort of above that tier is a 3060 3060, so I think, was the did, majority did very of well. Yeah, a lot of PC builds like started putting the 3060s in 1080p there. Yeah. style gaming. So well, and yeah, actually, it's, most it's high FPS rough. games are played at 1080p. They're not played at high quality oh, at, sure. at, at QHD or even at. Oh, 4K. and especially anything competitive. Yeah, it's, of course. It's yeah, because yeah, it's like all we're, about we're boasting all this like <laughs> ray tracing and stuff. And like, I know. I need I need a 360 hertz monitor, and then I'm going to kick down all of the quality settings to the bare minimum. So that the game is running at like three thousand FPS. I, so, so I can see the future ahead no... of my my opponent. So I so, so I could actually see the future <laughs> before he can. No, no, I, oh, I David totally... Burns has it. So okay, yeah. so these are the top three cards: sixteen fifty, ten sixty, and thirty sixty. So so okay, yeah, good to know. And if you have a thirty sixty, you You're still are good. so close to the performance of the forty sixty. It's not even funny. So we're not gonna we're not gonna dig too much into all of this. It's just been crazy to me that with all this Nvidia. We're not news, switching categories. AMDs, we're not leaving phones and going to GPUs now. I, I mean like I I've, I've been toying with like maybe I'm just gonna hike out into the woods and just talk about batteries and solar panels for the rest of my life. It's it, it's you know it's, it's not that sometimes. bad of a conversation. That's not that bad of a conversation. I wish <laughs> I wish I was doing more of that. Lately I've been I've been actually on a on like a like quite a few scooters and, and e-bikes so like i have mm -hmm. a um i've had a few commitments hopefully come in in the near future actually a really cool one that looks kind of like a i don't know what's the name of the car like the old um wood car the one that had wood siding oh, on yeah, it like the, the uh, woodies yeah yeah the woodies so there is a there's an e-bike like, like a high like a three thousand something whatever they're gonna but let me borrow it um but it has that style wood trim in it and it's a fat tire and it's a cr nice. and it's a cushion and really nice seat. Like seriously, once you go to the to the comfortable ride of the fat tire, you're like, I don't want to kind of go back to the regular ones. So yeah, <laughs> see what happens when I go hang out with you just to shoot a video on an X3. You take me down a path, and now my whole summer's ruined. So, but yeah, thank you, it's thank you, I great. appreciate that. Well, but not also, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> um, because your whole summer is going to get way more adventurous. Dude, um, so uh, just a little bit of BTS. Um, my brother bought one of uh, one of uh, Juan's old bikes. He rode it all around our town on Wednesday or yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday. It was so oh, nice. So he hot. finally fixed the brakes. It was a little bit of a thing with the brakes when we put the yeah. tire back on. So he took it to the shop. They fixed it out. They adjusted everything. He's really, really cool. So he's really loving it. And it's seriously like yours is very, really way more powerful than some of the other options that I have. Mm -hmm. Velotric makes really good bikes. I'll say that. Those top notch are quality like and they're scary. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very. And that's like I haven't had other bikes, like all the other bikes that I've tested haven't gotten close to it. They they get better, but they're not there. So yeah, yeah long story short, it's a lot of fun and it's I'm glad great he's been when the weather's it, nice. Though. I, yeah, I mean yeah. that uh 
was it the discover the discover, the discover yeah. was such a fun bike to ride and and honestly because i was gonna say we probably would have made after. more sense for me to keep that rather than the nomad but the nomad is such a freaky fat tire bike i just had i, I just a, had to that, it's dude, just such a beast even the, that one is even um what was i gonna say the the just the sheer weight and and performance of it it's actually it's it a different like ride. A moped. Yeah, every time I get on the fat, so every time I ride the bike and I'm on the fat tire, I, it takes me about a, a thirty second to realize, like, oh wait, this is the oh I can't just do it. Changes a, all of your balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't like oh oh slower slower, but um, going off road with it, so much easier. The gravel, all of that, you just don't feel any of that. Um, and I unlock the uh, the speed on it, that, so the fat the fat tire that I have can go up to thirty miles an hour for me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Five more miles, and I'm at uh, you know uh, moped speeds. Um, so it's mm -hmm. crazy. I, I picked up a couple of helmets, so I have I have some good head head gear. Uh, but I don't know. I did, like a, I said, I did a couple of the the hills up by the horse trails and stuff uh, uh -huh. a little yeah, further yeah. past where I took you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should really get like some like shoulder and uh I, like I, I, that's I, I what i feel like rider protective like yeah, elbow pads i, I, I and feel like i and stuff i want to be ready for that day where i feel like i'm gonna turn into superman when i hit something because if i get kicked man i'm i'm going pretty quick and yeah. it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a pretty gnarly crash so um speaking of gnarly crashes let's jump right into the phone that <laughs> you have okay so that we was could... the worst transition i could come up with in the I... moment I don't know why. I mean, and it's not I, a crash. It's not a crash. I'm bad. It's, it's I'm like bad at segways. I tried to find like the most tactical nuclear bad. I, I will know how say, to say nuclear. Nu I do that uh, as a joke pepper. to emphasize how bad that, noise. that was. Noise, noise, my friend. No, no. Um, but on, on, a, on a bad segue, I do hope one day to be able to try one of those segway scooters because that's also a lot of fun. Yeah, um, those are really cool. So. To talk about it, and I kind of made a joke about this on the uh, on in the video. This phone is called the Edge, but it has the lack of edges. It's rounded on everything. Mm -hmm. It has a quad mm -hmm. rounded display on the top, bottom, and right and mm -hmm. left. You flip it over, it's rounded everything. The camera sense the camera bump on the back, it's all rounded. So right. I was kind of jokingly saying, why did they call it the Edge? Yeah, <laughs> it's like they, it's they not should, the Edge. They shouldn't call it Oval Team. No, the, I'm the, like the, the, oh, like the round. round, the logos round, it's round. The everything. Round. They yeah, should call uh, it Round Team. Like you know, look at this. You the know, <laughs> even the battery thing is like. <laughs> um, but oh, uh, and, and okay, so I, I, want, I want to show you guys. So I got this really cool wallpaper off of Ice Universe today. I'm like, hey, oh my god, that's a good one. It was it's so that's good. It's clean. I like that. It, it, but so that's the weird thing about it. Is th this display is it's not a QHD display, right? It's a 1080p, 165 hertz, but it's actually really good. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a POLED display, um, very clean, full HD plus. Um, and I really thought I was going to miss having QHD at 120 hertz with the Pixel 7 Pro because I'm transitioning over from the 7 Pro and now I'm actually using the uh, the Edge Plus 2023. And it's, it's really invigorating to see some of these nice subtle optimizations that Motor's done over what we mm -hmm. get with just a stock, you know, material U type of an experience. But then the kicker for me is it's ready for this is why yeah. I chose. Reason why I switched, it wasn't even because of all of that. It was ready for. This sucker is, it's you video out, it's ready for, it's what I've wanted since last year. The benefit of the mm -hmm. 8 Gen 2, um, we're still running 8 gigs of RAM, but you won't even know it. Like you're using it and you're like, this has 8 gigs of RAM, not 12? Yeah. Perfectly fine. And, and no limitations on how many apps you can install. I mean, how many apps you can run, run in yep. ready for or what uh, resolution you can run ready for. Everything. You don't I had have a... to install a dumb good luck solution. <laughs> it's it, it just works. It to just works. It thing. Wor well, not only that though. <laughs> like in the system UI, if you if you want to share links between something, one of the options when you're sharing links, you can share it straight into ready for and have it cast into a display. So you yep. can go ready for PC, wireless, wired. Um, I, I, jokingly, I took it with me to my uh, to during my day job. So in the video, you get to see me plugging it in directly into a dock with a keyboard and mouse, an external hard drive, and a monitor, and an ultra wide thirty four inch ultra wide, mm -hmm. uh, you know, QHD monitor, and it was beautiful, beautiful. Yep. So yes, you got you don't have to do anything. It just nope. does it all. It, it but ready so for nice. is so smooth though that's the weird thing about it it's it's been optimized i mean it's exactly how it was on the on the uh, edge plus 2022 now the got, got michael peppertech 
good lock because Samsung is good at locking you out of features <laughs> until you use it. Yeah, but that's actually only... I'm, I might have to steal that from you, Michael Peppertech. I will I will endeavor to credit you properly, but <laughs> I might forget. <laughs> But Hopefully, I, I like that no, no, I know it, it. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. But yeah, every no. time we get those improvements on a Motorola, that's where we get extra settings and features and upgrades for Samsung Dex. Yeah, but it's still been that thorn in the rock in my shoe. Yeah, that I want to tell someone about using their phone as a computer, and you plug a Motorola into anything, and it properly detects, and it gives you the best capabilities that the phone is able to provide. Provide, yep, And exactly. it kills me that Samsung makes you jump through these really obtuse hoops. And again, like, we have an, we have an audience full of people right now in this live stream who can figure that out. Yeah, That's of not the issue. It's, mm. I want to get to a point where the average consumers can can trust like their phone could really replicate the style of desktop computing yeah they're not gonna go and jump through all of these hoops and settings every time i show off advanced camera features i get a deluge of techie saying but what about the average people and then i bring up stuff like ready for and those same people are like but i could do that with good luck everybody is gonna be fine using really buried software that's hard to install and find all the settings and you're like well, and, and you have no reference to good luck it that, samsung never says anything about it you have to actually know that, that this exists nah. um and not only that it just to me so i, I didn't realize that i that the desktop experience needed to have categories till i saw it saw it implemented on on ready for because the it's organization smart. they have is, is seriously like, you, yeah. what do you want to do? Do you want to use a desktop mode? Do you want to watch movies? Do you want to play games? It's exactly and it shortcuts you right in, and it takes yeah. you straight in. It for the movies, you have all your movie app in there. You turn it on. You can use your mouse on your on the uh, on the phone, or you can even again with my keyboard or mouse. I wasn't even touching. I left the phone on the side, and I was yeah. just using all my shortcuts. Um, every window is resizable. Everything is oh, and it, like you said, there's no limitation on what apps show up. So it, it was truly that desktop experience. So th that was a this great is... conversation I had with um, Michelle and, and David Ruddick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we were talking about like this desktop mode idea has basically just been a failure to launch. Um, there, it... there is a very tiny group of people that are enthusiasts and and appreciate this type of mixed mode computing. Yeah, but I brought up this point and then we had kind of an extended conversation about it, though, is We've missed so many incredible opportunities to present this better to consumers. Yeah. Is if you've got um, a gaming phone, you don't need Ready For, you don't need Dex, no. but boy howdy would people appreciate being able to plug their phone into a TV and use their phone like a console mm -hmm. and not burn out their phone screen having to dual run the game or having mismatched aspect ratios or anything like that. And then I brought up another one like, I kind of feel Sony has missed an opportunity to, um, th they've got great video input features. I'm gonna yeah. be putting out a video on the external monitor mode. Yeah, um, yeah. But why not have a mode where you plug it into like a monitor and then you've got photo editing software ready to go. And, or, and you know, or even video, yeah, photo or, or video editing. Photo or, or you know what, you, you could maybe pick a, a, like a launch screen, but if the camera is so production, I'm sorry, if the phone is so production focused, Give me a streamlined, simplified, I'm going to work on a bigger screen using these tools. And the yep. closest we've got to that is LumaFusion, mm -hmm. where LumaFusion has finally brought over to Android second monitor support. And it's rudimentary. You push a button and it just turns, your, turns the monitor into a preview window and you still do all the editing from the phone. But yep. if LumaFusion can do that and it's monitor and aspect ratio aware, why can't any other app or any other developer or any other phone manufacturer figure this out. The it's, only thing we ever seem to get is screen mirroring or some half-hearted attempt at like, well, I mean, if you install this app and then you can do this and then you can kind of change the aspect ratio on the fly. And if you do an ADB command, then you can fix all of these. And you're like, that's not it. What I need is I've got a dock on my desk. I yep. put my phone in the dock and then a computer works. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's get that to, to me. It's, no and it would be the exact it. same dock I docked my laptop to it. I just don't dock the laptop. I lock. I dock my phone. 
Um, yeah. I, and I feel like maybe that it would that would be the next uh, next for, uh, I guess uh, section that Sony needs to start focusing on because they've done improvements in you know the monitoring app and now we can record internal well we the five can record internally to its storage. Uh, but mm -hmm. there's still, yeah, like, what do you do with that content? We have the voice app, which allows us to do some work, but it's cloud-based. Uh, and it's not really very much into, it, like, slicing and dicing. It's mostly about, you know, separating the tracks and cleaning up an audio and all of that done uh, via their on online services. But, yeah, if the ability of making this truly a Maverick type of a device that can work for creators, we need that function, plugging it into a yeah. display and getting that desktop experience. Start so editing it. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you're on the on the train because, like, I was trying to show off ready for last year. Um, oh, same. Yeah, yeah. No, big, big. How, how how has the rest of the phone been? I actually just posted a really sort of tongue in cheek photo from my Moto Edge Plus 2022 on okay. the Discord because it was like this is the poorest performing premium phone camera of 2022 and. I, I feel like it's a pretty good photo, <laughs> but even I would have like, again, I, I, I lovingly sort of pick on Moto because they're not trying to be a content no. creator brand, but they're... it's still like kind of illustrative for me to say, I truly believe that this phone had the poorest performing camera in its price tier. For that, yeah. I feel like the camera is plenty capable in the hands of people who are going to use a phone like this, like there's nothing to really hold you back, even if I would still consider it the least performance. It, it's definitely not group. going to win awards. And I think for me, the performance that I've seen with it overall, uh, I'll, I'll say this, the triple camera setup that we have on the back, the two primary 50 megapixels, the ultra wide and the main is going to be 50 megapixels. And then we have a portrait lens. We don't have a telephoto lens. So it's a portrait imagery, the ability of basically using a third a sensor, a 12 megapixel just for portrait, uh, for video, as well as for, um, for, you know, for photography. The front facing camera is a 60 megapixel camera, which I think it's the same 60 we had last year. I don't really feel like it changed much. The biggest thing that I loved about it is that we have 4K 60 across all lenses. So it's a continuous experience all across with 8K 24, I think limited to the main sensor, but images are still pretty decent. I, I put out a whole bunch of samples in the video that I was shooting. Mm -hmm. A few, I did end up having to basically touch up a little bit with, uh, you know, snap seeds and stuff like that. But at, at, the, at its raw information, you're able to shoot high megapixel images if you want to take a full readout of your sensor. And I feel like this is where it gets a little bit better for me than the the auto mode that we get specifically in pixel i'm yeah. not trying to yeah you know, i'm not harping on it. i i think there's a big there is a place for that but having the ability of saying okay i want to take a full readout on my sensor is it's is something that fundamentally should be there every device every company puts it out and mm. that was those are some of the things i, I enjoyed in there um, they have a couple of new tricks in there. There's the horizon lock, which I, I couldn't really justify that it, where you lock the video and regardless of what mode you're doing, the video stays 16 by nine. Like your hand could be like this and the video stays 16 by nine. It locks the horizon. Oh, I, I, I really like that, that feature on Vivo. Cause oh. it's sort of like their most aggressive stabilization mode. And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I saw your video and, and you know, I, to talk to you about like what Motorola is doing, but it, it's still kind of voodoo to me that it's as good as it is. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, no, I mean, it, it's kind I'll of say funny, that. like when you're when, especially when you're just kind of standing still. But like if, if you're trying to aggressively chase after oh, a yeah, seven no. year old I, I, on a no. playground, it, it is kind of remarkable what it can do to sort of level that off and again that that feature is on a moto this is like where a cheaper I moto than out. last year's moto at launch which is the real but, thing that i don't understand how they were able to do but yes sorry well no pen support that's yeah, how they but, did it but is the pen that much you think the pen is that expensive the Wacom I, display? I, I don't know. I no, I mean no like idea. so when i when i was so, looking through the the specifications and all the different things that was about the only thing I can point my finger to that was different but than last year's generation. It was the pen it, input. Yeah. yeah, right? It, it was flat out not in there. Not that they hit it and they released the pen later. I, I, I almost, I hope it's maybe just a, a, a oh, commentary on manufacturing costs or... It could be, yeah. How the, the, how, maybe how the what is it? The the 40 series is selling internationally as opposed oh, that's to right. the, the 40 Edge Pro is there. So... This is if technically they're doing, if they're um, doing all right and they can sell it scaled and maybe that is enough to build in some cost savings. I just I hope it's not a situation where they found a way to to press lower margins and then 
this phone is only going to be worth it when it's on fire sale at the end of the year for like 350 bucks. And you're still able so. to buy, by the way, the, the, uh, the 22 series isn't, isn't gone like the, uh, <laughs> it's right there. No. Um, I think you're still able to pick it up for like a under four, or like under 500 bucks, like 399 or 499 with, and I think that, so one thing to be said, the pen input, I think is a very valuable feature, which was I was like the only person that asked Moto at the time during the pre-brief that we were going through. Yeah, like W2F. What, and then you yeah, flipped like, over a table and you punched the PR guy in the face. I, yeah, I did the table part. But yes, you, you know, even you guys know me. I, I'll flip a table I'm, any I'm day. I'm an angry pacifist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will flip <laughs> tables, water cups, anything on its any surface that does not impact the... Per no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it, it was... Honestly, when they said Ready 4 was still there, they, they kind of won me over already at that point. Um, I'll, I'll say the, the overall, there was an update that just pushed out this morning, uh, that actually updated the security patch update to April 1st. Um, mm -hmm. the phone runs really good. The, per, the audio is really nice. I didn't realize I liked the curve on the bottom of the display till I used this phone. Okay. That edge, having no edge at the bottom when you're swiping in, it actually it was it was a noticeable improvement over. Obviously, it, it all goes out when you put a case on it. But for the first couple of days when I got the phone, I didn't have a case yet. Um, so having that transition and going in straight in without having to catch an edge on the phone was definitely mm -hmm. very nice. But the biggest kicker that I love about this, which I don't know if I can show this uh, too far here, but it's the ability of basically interacting with your notifications and jumping into response yeah. straight from the always on display. Like they've done, it's clean. yeah, and it works. It works so well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think because you know people pick up a moto, they don't dig very deep. I mean, I've got people have been sending me other people's reviews on the Moto Edge. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not enough to stand out. What's even different this year? Is it worth it for <laughs> the monies? And you're like, I get it. You 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 turned the phone on and you put in a Gmail account. And then you looked at the UI and you said, well, this is just basic stock Android. Yeah. And then you yeah. dig, you, you dug no deeper than that. And I know there are other apps that you can install that can kind of replace this functionality, mm -hmm. but it's things like just being able to, you know, gesture your dude way in the morning. I walk, controls. I walk down the stairs and all I do is do this. <laughs> it's like, I was like, that is so cool. Yeah. That so, little chop, uh, the motor my, chop is nice. With all of the amazing phones on my desk right now, um, Marie has finally shuffled off the mortal coil of her Pixel 4a 5G. <laughs> okay. So what she, happened? She, where, she, where she was going caseless for a little while because she damaged the case so badly. Man, she's, my, she's Max Weinbach in this thing. Okay, keep going. Continuing to use... I, I, I love my wife to death. We don't buy her premium, premium tier phones anymore unless we can really ruggedly protect them. And even then... It's dicey. So, uh, just to see if she likes it, she okay. is borrowing my Xperia 1 Mark IV. I don't think she's she's really going to like the size of the phone, and we're not going to buy her an Xperia 1 Mark V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, if she likes the overall vibe, I think we're really seriously going to look at an Xperia 5. Yep. It, you know, once we maybe finally get word on an Xperia 5 Mark V. So, yeah. with her taking my Xperia... My SIM card is back in the my SIM moto. card is back in the moto. <laughs> so that's the Pixel Seven here. I, I've got I've got all of these Vivos and Xiaomi's. I've got a bunch of other like sort of import phones. I've got the yeah, Pixel yeah. Seven Pro. Um, it's something I want nice. The Moto phone, and then I carry another phone for the camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's, I, I, I I'll say that it's kind of a weird. Yeah. So it's it's been more of the norm for me re within the recent months that yeah you're right i have the xiaomi 13 ultra sitting in my other my other pocket i mean yep. if i'm taking a photo if i'm taking a video i am yep. don't get me wrong i can pull out the moto but the, if i really want to get that footage the way i really want it the 13 ultra or the find x6 pro are for me right now the phones and if i'm alternating yep. between those two but yes um these are cameras these are i mean oh speaking of which uh, sorry real quick I reached out to um, to Gistop and um, they said that they're going to start shipping out the camera kit early June. So I'm assuming they're okay. getting a stock, some kind of new stock or something. I, I mean, I'm hoping I'll in the same boat. Get the shipping notification. Yeah. I, I still like you. We said it uh, like last week. I think like at some point they'll, they'll probably just cancel 
those pre-orders. I, I was trying to cancel. I was trying to reach out. It, no, that's what it was. I was trying to uh, call them and contact them to cancel and said, is there any chance to give me any updates or whatever? Because if you can't, can we just go ahead and cancel? They're like, well, it looks like we're going to be shipping them early June. They, she said, uh, or they said via text, um, in June at the beginning. And I'm like, so, okay. you know, backwards. And so I confirmed, well, said, we'll you see. meant in two weeks, beginning of June, you're going to start shipping out kits. I was like, okay. We'll see. I I, we'll I, see. I would like to carry the 13 Ultra in that ca in that configuration all the time. I don't want to carry it. At this point, I phone. might as well, because yeah. I'm not going to use it as a phone. So really? even if you try to unlock and so if you so there is a there is the European ROM that's already out. It's been leaked. Um, oh, OK. You'd have to unlock the bootloader, which requires to basically no more DR. So you can't have Google Pay or any of those services. Yeah. They stopped because you can't relock it once you transfer uh, over to the other ROM. Yeah. But you'll get the international variant of it. And then what the other thing that I didn't like is it still doesn't give you eSIM because eSIM is, is a built in function. Oh, so yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I it's mean, not really I, a solution. I really Might as well stay early. This is a phone for coverage. And yeah. the main thing I want to talk about is the camera performance anyway. So this is my little portable production. Yeah, no, rig. come on. Not yeah, this is exactly what Yeah, the Ultra and, and the, and the Find X6 Pro um, are truly cameras with the with smartphones connected to them. Um, but it is at the end of the day, yeah, these are cameras that you use and you use them purposely for the function that you're trying to do. Yeah. So, uh, but I am, but I will say this, um, surprised that I'm still digging the Moto, even though from last year to this year, because last year I didn't get a chance to play with it for that long. Last year I played mm -hmm. with the Verizon variant of it mm -hmm. and I couldn't test it out with like T-Mobile and some of the other options. Mm -hmm. So it was never, you know, you know like I wasn't going to switch to Verizon. And then that one I ended up returning, I think was it shortly after I got it, about a month yeah, or so later. Yeah, they asked for it back quick. Yeah, there was a, um, it was pretty quick. And I kind of so I, I also got a Verizon model to review and eventually yeah. they said that I could just hold on to it. So I maybe sent it to a family member <laughs> who is on Verizon and unfortunately like he's such a good dude. Um he's never really like hit me up for phones and stuff, but it's good because I very rarely get Verizon models that very would be yeah. easy. Or for him the, to set the up ones that yeah, account. we get to check out and, and so not this return. one I, got, I I sent it over and he was like, Wow man, this is a nice phone. And I'm like, Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but mine, my, I, I did eventually spring. I, I liked the Verizon model so much. I ended up buying my own. Uh, the unlocked came out a little bit later on. Yeah, and 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 it, that was the so other we surprising. we got more storage, and yeah. we lost millimeter wave five G, which I didn't care about. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad I spent the money. I think I got it on not at its lowest lowest sale, but I got it on a pretty good sale price. I want to say it was like five fifty or something like that. Still, still but, um, consider the fact that it's a five hundred and twelve gig. Yes, it's a five hundred and twelve gig storage <laughs> device. And I mean, even right now with with the I sale, mean, like, it's, it's show not me even a on. Pixel Seven A with five hundred and twelve gig of storage, like a thousand know? something. Like, no, 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 totally. Um, it, and any device in the market right now that's running the HN2 with 512 gigs of storage at 799, I'd like to see the list of that, that that right. super short list of one kind of thing. Right. Um, so I a, am going to miss the stylus. I yeah. really am going to miss that. It is one of my favorite things to do when I'm rocking this phone, when the SIM mm -hmm. card is in it, where we'll go out to Shake Shack because uh, that's Lexi's favorite cheeseburger. And I can slide her the phone and pull the pen. Yeah, I mean, I'm with No, no, no absolutely. Absolutely. Team, team Lex all the way. It's, it is so refreshing having a little, little kid who's like, I don't know, if I want the toy, we could go to Wendy's, but, you know, I think I like the cheeseburgers at Shake Shack better. And she's making that decision. I'm not, like, nudging her. If she, if she wanted to go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal, I would I take her to I need to introduce McDonald's Omar to Shake Happy Shack. Meal, he, hasn't had a, he hasn't had a Shake Shack for ages. The last time we had it was in New York. Uh, no, no, New York. It was in D.C. It was like a few years back, but pre-pandemic. <laughs> So, so it was, yeah. So Sean was catching my commentary and stuff, and I was really hyping up the Moto Edge, and he ran one too. So uh, I, there are a few folks. I mean, people actually like checking out some stuff that's not, I mean, because I, I would say this is a niche productivity phone. Mm -hmm. I, it's yeah. not really kind of the same kind of mainstream idea of trying what, to be but an it, but it also kind of came out oh, sorry. this year the, the point I was making is yeah. we'll, we'll be waiting for our order, and I can slide my phone over to her. And she's familiar with the Autodesk Sketchpad. Mm -hmm. So all of those pens and tools and, and like all the different brushes and stuff. So she's got the stylus and it's, it's pressure sensitive. And she's drawing and doing fills and like sketching and, and doodling and stuff. And it's so, it's so much fun to watch her do that than mm -hmm. watch her play a game. 
right? Yeah. There's something so much it's creative. A, I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything about gaming because that's another thing. Is I've got her playing Dead Cells now. <laughs> She's, she's, she's played for almost exactly two hours. She still has not cleared the first dungeon, but yeah. she's playing a platformer. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm so stoked. Anyway, um, but there's something so... It, it's a different kind of stimulus and engagement. So she's never been the kid to just, like, slack jaw, watch a video in a restaurant. Like, we've never let her do that. We don't really do that. She'll play some games and she'll kind of get into them, but there's something so vibrant about watching her, like, even when she's just being silly and scribbling, it's so much more active. You see, has she, the has she checked out turning. the Optimus uh, Prime game yet on uh, Netflix? No, I, that was fighter, actually, that... I really want to try it. I, yeah. I, so it's, it's... I might, I might let her kind of, kind of play that. I, I played through. I'm on the second. No, I'm. A, I finished the second path because they mm -hmm. have this weird like running path that you go yeah, from yeah, fight yeah. to fight to fight. Yeah, it, it so reminds me of. What's it called? Uh, uh, Marvel Universe and stuff like that. I'm like, yes. really? We're doing well, past? You can totally see where it was probably originally developed to be an obnoxious pay to win. Like, because now that I'm on the third path, mm -hmm. the strategy and the timing, the combos, the enemies are all getting like way harder. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's like, now I'm going to have to grind a whole bunch just to because I can't up. just throw money. <laughs> You know what's um, kind of crazy? Um, yeah. It just got announced today. I know I'm, we're totally segueing our, our totally. Uh, we're, we're totally uh, uh, tangenting on our podcast here. Uh, do you remember World of Goo? That really old. Oh, Android that game? inky the uh, the inky. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. The yeah. remastered version. They just uh -huh. did a remaster for Netflix. It's it what? looks really nice. Yeah. What are World you of Goo saying? Remastered. Word of... It's okay. such a throwback. I mean, it's. I'm not going to sit there and burn as much time today as I did way no, back. No, I mean, day. obviously, it was much more. But I'm I liked not that say. game. It was a silly game. Speaking of which, um, in Ready for when you jump into the game, the EY is so mm -hmm. cool that if you're launching a Netflix game, it launches the interface for Netflix and lets you log through Netflix, authenticate, nice. and takes you straight into the game. Very, That's like clean. seriously, some of the best experiences on there, and I'm actually really excited. Hold on, let me see here. Oh yeah, World of Goo remastered. There you go. Get the game. See? Buddy. Isn't that cool? Yep. yep, yep so yeah, yep, yep. I really liked the Transformers Fighter. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, it's it's interesting, like seeing mobile mechanics at play because I <laughs> played it kitty. first. Sorry. <laughs> on my um, on my Razor Edge, mm -hmm. and there is no controller support because it's built all on it's touch screen on touch. exactly swipes and stuff. Um, but yeah, like the Netflix catalog is really strong right now they're they're I, really I, good options. every time i go in there i got a little bit surprised and in, these games are so much fun on the plane because they're they're basically time consumers right you can play and you can enjoy them mm -hmm. and with this phone i can enjoy using my rokid max at the same time as on the yeah again uh video output yeah. is it, it is not a it's I, so handy I, it's it's a necessity though i really think we need to be at the point now any device that even calls itself a flagship should have video out. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I missed it in the chat who said it, but it, it, someone mentioned earlier that, like, why why will manufacturers focus on phones with video output if they're all trying to sell tablets now? And, like, it cynically <laughs> is starting to kind of feel like... Yeah, I mean, if you think about it... I pick up a OnePlus 11, and it yeah. is a ridiculously powerful pocket computer that I can do less with Mm -hmm. than my OnePlus 10 Pro. And this is the year that they came out with a tablet that if you bundle it with the OnePlus 11, it's like $1,000 for both. And you're but, like, I but get I, it. What I don't understand but is it's, neither supports video out. Not even the tablet does. No, because what they want you to do is kind of have the combo where the phone is piggybacking off the tablet and the tablet it, it, is piggybacking There is that interconnectivity, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, yeah. and they want you to maybe use casting. And it's not about casting. making pro devices or plus devices. It's about your little OnePlus ecosystem with earbuds that now have multi-point connect and can mm -hmm. juggle two different devices. And it's got a pen so that you can do all your art directly from it. I, and it really feels like that was the play let's 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 keep this all more insular and it's less expensive and you don't have to worry about someone finding additional use for their phone like you know like the next the the next pad that that yeah. you know we have next docs and uperfects and stuff like that but it's sad that we we don't have a good portable monitor that was designed to be picked up and held and cradle your phone to use as a tablet yeah and you're like that should exist 
our phones that, are way too powerful. We need the old Asus transformers and phone pads. Oh my god, the Asus transformer! Stuff. I missed that series. That was the sleekest looking la uh, laptop looking uh, uh, phone docks. Um, uh, sorry, tablets. Sorry, uh, transformer tablets. I remember I even had to buy the GPS module on the first transformer yeah. because the GPS sucked. Um, mm -hmm. No, no. I, I so the it, it's a very interesting to see how they are trying to leverage. You're right. The interconnectivity. They're trying to keep you in, into ecosystem, and you know the buds, the tablet, the phone, and all mm -hmm. work together, but not necessarily work the exact same way if you brought a second phone into the game, so it doesn't really play as well. Um, it, it is very different. It is different. But the other thing that I would probably also say is that uh, OnePlus never really invested in the desktop mode experience. They gave us video out, which I really think we, was a very yeah. big feature for it, but it was only video out. It was never anything more. You could turn on desktop mode and you could turn maybe a secondary launcher. We've done videos. You've but done we, many videos but on those. But we've got the, the comments here because um, Michael Peppertech you know, yeah. just brought up that in real... I think because of some lawsuits on the name of their company is changing their name to X real. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is what kills me is like when you remove features from a phone, mm -hmm. it makes it more difficult to come up with other accessories to add to the phone. Yeah. And so when we lost headphone jacks, we also lost other things too, that you could do with a headphone jack. Like, um, plug in Audio. a microphone. Uh, there were Audio buttons. Put. Do you remember the button adapters? You could add like a top click button that would give you like a shortcut. I had, the, I, I, I bought those. I used to have a whole bunch just to basically have the clicker and I used to use it on my one plus, but yeah. We saw how that was a rough transition for credit card readers mm -hmm. because that was the interface people that was the interface as well. swipe a yeah, credit yeah. card was off of the three point, because Even, that was a an, universal Antennas, a lot of, lot of uh, devices that used yeah. to have radios and die, they used to use the headphone jack. FM radio yep. would attach and then you would have an antenna that you could use for that kind of, it's a, it's my favorite gag in, um, it's a South Korean zombie movie. And I can't, I think it's hashtag alive. Okay. I might have that wrong, but, um, it, it's, it's kind of about the pandemic. It's all these people who have survived the initial wave of a zombie outbreak and they're all sort of stuck in their homes, isolated from each mm -hmm. other. And this one character is like trying to get these emergency radio broadcasts. And he's like, okay, well, I need, I need a pair of headphones so that I can connect my phone to this radio frequency so I can get these alerts. And he dumps out a box of audio gear and it's all Bluetooth. <laughs> It's all Bluetooth earbuds and headphones. And it is like, I think he actually like drop, you know, like he actually is like poop, you know, it's like, oh, I can't do this. Like that's kind um, of, yeah, no, I know. I know that. But, but like all, all of those things. So when you remove video output, you remove any potential for a future accessory like wearable displays, augmented reality, VR, yeah. All of that means you literally cannot use the incredible compute power of a OnePlus 11 to drive a more immersive or content rich experience. And that kills me it because is, you it, can fire up the Nebula one. app on a yeah. OnePlus 10 Pro and that works really well. That, yeah. that, it looks really good um, consuming content that way. No, I mean, and that was one of my biggest things about the Ultra on the 13 Ultra is the fact that, you know, Xiaomi supports, you know, video output. Finally, like video output are legit. Finally. Yeah, like it was it crazy. It feels ultra. It feels yeah, like I know. against my 12S Ultra, the 13 Ultra feels more ultra. Every time I... Okay, <laughs> All so every, Ultras are ultra, but some are more ultra than others. There is something different wah, about the 13 wah. Ultra. Like it, 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 it has a certain... Like it, it just performs so well. Um, the cameras are always consistent. The the performance software updates on this has been crazy. Like it's really yeah. weird to see Chinese companies and how frequently they update phones for the Chinese market, but then you see the international market gets so few love, a very little bit of update. Yeah. Um, and, 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 but it definitely seems to be a source of of hometown pride. Well, I, mean, I, I think we've had I, that I, conversation I, yeah. before, actually, is, it, it's, even it's on a, this podcast. But it's a it's a tough story. But it's um, this is one of one of those reasons I was saying we we probably don't really benefit much by going to try to maybe flashing this with the EU ROM and trying to get it in there. I think we should just stick with what it came with because I think that's going to be the best experience the Ultra is going to give us, like realistically. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm probably well again. I'm probably just going to keep it on the Chinese ROM because yeah. the updates have been uh, more. Um, uh, more aggressive. More That's not the word I want to use. More timely. Timely. <laughs> um, more aggressive. They come but, up uh, there and they're uh, like, 
update <laughs> because i want to spend i really do want to spend some time talking about the tick watch the other two things that i've got yes um let, let me talk about the phone and then we can save the tablet for the very very end if we've got yeah, i'm actually interested to, to find up. out more about that tablet because i've never heard of that um before. so so we'll, we'll we'll push pause there but i just want to highlight this because from talking about the most expensive phones on the market today every single time i get this company here in the gadget lab it makes me crazy that we're not seeing more entry-level competition for good devices here in the United States. And so this is the Infinix Note 30 Pro. So you got the Pro. This is, so there's, got... the, there's a Note 30, mm -hmm. there's a Note 30 Pro and a Note 30 5G. You got the 5G? No, I got the Note 30. Oh, you got the Note 30, okay. I, yeah, I got so, the base model, you got the uh, you got the Pro model. Middle. Mine is not a 5G, Middle. it's a 4G LTE, yeah. Or so, yeah. Ballpark for the Pro, and again, this is all depending on region and um, distribution and exchange rates for currencies, but yeah. what Infinix is aiming for is around $270 US, the equivalent of $270 US. About $239 for this guy. Yeah, I was going to say between $240, wasn't it? Two, yeah, like, yeah $239, 239 $240. Sorry, you have to, yeah, $240. Like yeah, yeah. Sorry, for some reason, my brain went to 250 and that's not what it is at all. No, no, hey, so we're, we're doing the exact same phones. thing. Remember last Friday? I could not do math. It was just not the right thing. <laughs> you pulled the string on my back and math <laughs> is hard. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> the more we're, you we're, know. we're talking about Sorry. the full MSRP, sub $300. Now, Infinix has carved out their niche and also shipping phones to regions that are woefully underserved by larger players. Absolutely. So, so many people love to come to my comments on Infinix videos. Oh, but I could buy an old premium phone for less. And you're like, that's great. Absolutely. Infinix doesn't ship to, company, to countries where the people who live there have easy options to buy a two-year-old iPhone that cheap. Yeah, yeah. It's, that doesn't it's, exist it's yeah, exactly. And again, we are talking full MSRP, not what the phone will cost on the ground if there's a deal, if there's a sale, if there's mm -hmm. any other price or assistance. It could be a feature it, phone on a company uh, on a two-year plan or something like that, depending on where you are. Yeah, absolutely. The price is so affordable that it, yeah. you could definitely see that happening. And, and you get so much with the, like a large display, high refresh rate, fast charging, like crazy for that price point. Like seriously, they... They really stacked the features. I didn't spend as much time digging through and memorizing the specs on the Note 30, but on the Note 30 Pro, mm -hmm. the Just... only compromises people are going to make for yeah. the full feature completeness of this, the only compromises you're going to make are uh, 5G. Mm -hmm. This does not have a 5G radio. Nope. Uh, it does not have an IR blaster. And that one was a little sad for me because the, the Infinix Zero, I think, still had an IR blaster. Yeah, it, we lost the and, IR blaster, but we have stereo speakers. And you're stepping down to... The G99? A modest Helio. <laughs> uh, I'm running the Helio G99. Which one's... Is that I think it's on the, the same. Note 30? I think yeah, it's yeah. the same. Yeah, I think we're running the same processor. I think it, it's where the configuration... I think... Um, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's the G99. I have 45 watt charging. I think you have 65 watt. You are yes. slightly higher. Um, 64 megapixels is the primary sensor, as opposed to that 108 that you have. 108. And that's uh, a, that's actually kind of a wash. At these no, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's it's a numbers the only thing. thing that the only thing it might be a little bit better at because there yeah. is no fancy pixel resampling software algorithm there's no video stabilization even software stabilization uh, no, it's, no, no, yeah this is a g99 and 1080p video is taxing the g99 yeah the one thing it's probably a little bit better at than the note 30 is crop zoom okay this that probably. 108 megapixel sensor is probably a little bit better at doing a two to four times zoom i, I probably which again have. makes the the macro sensor absolutely useless so okay, I'll say two that time zoom yeah, from the yeah, main yeah. camera looks so much better than any of these crappy two megapixel um, macro, macro lenses. sensors. I, and I and I think close. at some point we yeah there has to be some kind of petition we can sign where companies can just stop using just the leave two megapixel. Yeah, just 
keep it. I know you want say it to you have look one like camera. You've yeah, got six thousand cameras, cameras here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you really only have one functional it, camera. I, 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 I saw that in your video when you were phone. saying that. Like, look, this is going to be that I don't one even know camera. What the third sensor is for? Like, don't even bother. Just sit, seriously, <laughs> stay to the sixty-four on the thirty. Go for the one hundred eight on the thirty Pro. Um, it, it, um, it, for, so I just want to break this down real quick. Yeah, go for it. Sub, sub $300. Yeah. 120 hertz refresh rate OLED. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 Even on the 30. Resolution. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 65 watt charging, mm -hmm. 15 watt wireless charging, reverse yeah, wireless that. charging. Yeah. We... And this has charge separation. Oh, just... Wow. Okay. You can plug I... in the Note 30 Pro. I don't know that the Note 30 has it. I you didn't can see plug it. in the Note 30 Pro uh -huh. and bypass the battery. So when you're using it, you're not charging it. Oh, and it has a headphone This is jack. never going to be a gaming monster. No, 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 no. no, no. Uh, but I could keep Dead Cells running at close to 30 frames per second. I mean, like, I, everything I, else on the... It's got a headphone jack. It's got yep. dual SIM or single SIM with a memory SIM. card slot. Yep. It's got stereo speakers. Is yours badge JBL? Yes, same that JBL. Uh, okay. JBL tuning, yeah, yeah. Uh, stereo speakers JBL by JBL, speakers. I think they kept that down, yeah. Even the the like camera performance for stills mm -hmm. is pretty good. The camera performance for video is miserable. You're never going to do much with video on a sub three hundred dollar uh, Infinix. Yeah, but it is shocking how feature complete, how much phone you really get for not a lot of money. I mean, I would put this overall experience up against a Galaxy A series. I think you'd be in really good shape. The Galaxy A series is going to be more powerful. It's going yeah. to be better at graphics intense gaming. It yeah. will not be the battery monster that this is. No. It's not going to be as feature complete as this is. The UI it's reminds a me a really little bit of uh, uh, the notification panel reminds me a little bit of MIUI, the way they set it up with the, oh, the totally two separation, the, the swipe split. right. I hate yeah, that I so know. much. <laughs> I do like that they kept the large folders, though. Yes, this I is do like, like that, the, the one larger. thing because they finally got rid of the stupid app drawer mm -hmm. because they used to do that thing where you could swipe up, but then you couldn't swipe back down. It would take you to that weird shelf, shelf and then you, yeah. could, you could never get out of your app. You could never get out of your app drawer. So they finally got rid of that. But they have these new, like, mega large folders and this new sort of at a glance large folder widget. It's like which more is of your like most your recent. I was going to say, yeah, it's like more, yeah. more of like your most recent. It's kind of like how um, I think was it uh, the Pixel Fold is going to be doing it with that little raised yeah. bar that every time you go, you go yep. to recent, it shows up more like your recent app. Uh, this it's is functional. The, the sub three hundred dollar version of Honor, that idea. Honor <laughs> uses very similar um, UI elements like that on their on their launcher. The big folder with the swiping and everything. I feel like Infinix kind of like uh, they look at the bigger guys and they're like, "What can we copy?" Yeah. So they copied that. Those functions are on oh. Honor devices. They've been there for about a couple of generations. And then this notification yeah. bear, like, "Hey, Xiaomi's been doing it good. Okay, go ahead and new copy this one." So, and. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure because I like what what the differences are going to be between like the Note 30 Pro and the Note 30 5G. I don't know if it's the Note 30 Pro 5G. It might just be the Note 30 5G. Um, Pre-installed screen protector, mm -hmm. and hard it... plastic case, so not a rubbery uh, bumper case. Yeah, mine was also very. I had so I had a pre-installed screen protector and I had an extra one. So you can also yeah. That'll, there's okay, always... so that that's that's what I'm getting at. Earbuds in the box. Same. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the fastest charger that the phone supports in the box with the USB cable. And this is the pre-installed plastic screen protector. They also included a tempered glass. That's the spare that I got. Yeah, exactly. It's a fully for inclusive less package for less. Yeah, it, it's like the old days when we used to get all those extras in the box. And then we slowly, every every generation, we lose yeah. one piece at a time. Um, it It's so... Yeah, I, you know what? What I think is hilarious, I think the main thing driving the price difference between your Note 30 Pro, I mean your Note 30 and my Note 30 Pro, is mm -hmm. that they sent me the retail bundle that some regions will get, not all regions. Some regions will also include a 15 watt wireless charging pad. Oh, serious? So for that, okay. Yeah. 
That is so crazy. So you got, got the wireless. Well, because yours is wireless, by the way. Mine doesn't. The 30 does not have wireless. So Look I really that. feel like the, the, the component pricing but, between the two phones isn't really that much different. No. I feel it's just like the wireless charging, the different camera module, and the fact that some regions will have the wireless charger bundled mm -hmm. is the... Thirty dollar difference <laughs> between the two phones. You know, it, that's what um, makes the pro a pro. It is. Well, I mean, I'll say the uh, the, the higher ca the, the camera spec, the uh, the faster charging. I feel like they're making a very hard line and saying which what makes a pro a pro over what makes a, a standard model uh, be a standard model. And and the reason every time I've gotten these devices, I've always been super super happy to see that yeah. Lebanon is one of the countries that they set up to, and I think they sell in yeah. Lebanon. So that was the biggest thing for me. So I, it's easy for me to jump into Arabic mode if I want to turn it on and and just kind of uh, enjoy using it. And um, I didn't get a chance to spend that much time with it, but I hope I'll be able to kind of put it together. Yeah, Nvidia is having a hard time. Yeah, you got a very different package than I did, man. You you got you got the Primo. You know, top of the line yeah. shelf. Uh, I mean, we you know, we Infinix, always but... love the chunky box, right? The chunky yeah. box is always something to aspire to. Always extra. The stuff. super sleek, slim box is crap. But this so, was the chunky boxes in one sleeve. And and to actually, that to extra. kind of um, not to circle back too much, but I, I realized the um, Motorola's approach this year is slightly different. I mean, they included the charger in the box on the Good. expensive phone, where on the budget phone with the stylus they didn't. Yeah. No. They're like you have you have 15 watt chargers. Just go check your drawer. I kind feel of a thing. we need to keep a little bit of pressure on. I feel there's a pushback to Bring all of the, because we want to say there's like a standard, and there really isn't. Power delivery is a standard, so USB it, it PD, is. yeah, great. But everyone is including other alternative charging schematics, mm -hmm. and I feel it is we're getting close to a point where. It is becoming a potential consumer harm having different charging standards and companies not properly delivering those standards. So I've got um, I've got a U Green mm -hmm. high wattage charger. Okay, it freaks out some of my phones. I can't charge a Sony phone on it. It immediately oh. does that liquid detected in the charge socket, and you're like, that's bad. There the is a miscommunication that. happening between that charger and the phone. And yeah, yeah. the more we keep pushing battery technology and charging technology, I feel we're running dangerously close to someone getting hurt. And I don't want us to get to that point where you have to have like a personal injury lawsuit and then a class action to fix this problem. Instead, yeah. the solution is you got 68 watt charging on that Moto Edge, mm -hmm. you put the charger in the box. Yeah, and I think that's that is the... way too much wattage and, and your battery is getting And it's not common, not common. Very, very, like the, the chances that you're upgrading from the Edge 2022 to 2023 is slim. I'll be honest with you. There's, if you're from, a, from anybody that's up, that got the 2022 edition, when you look at the 2023, you're like, I don't want to lose my pen. I'm getting 90% yeah. of what the experience is anyway. It's the same experience, Gen 1 to Gen 2. Yes, we got a little bit better thermals. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at it realistically, this is obviously for earlier generations. Uh, and it is not going to be a charger that you have probably commonly around. It works with PD chargers, I'll say that. But how many of us have 65 watt or 80 watt PD chargers sitting around? Maybe 45 if you have a, the fast charging on some of the yeah. other techs. So the, the fact that it's included, I think that was very happy. And I'm also very happy to see that Infinix is not including just the charger, but the headset and the glass and the case and literally you everything that you need to start to yeah, use the out of the box out of the box exactly for th yeah. under three hundred dollars and I, I cannot stress this enough. I wish we had these here. Yeah, I very much value that Infinix and what's the other sister brand? Oh, I forgot the name. Techno. Uh, Techno. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Techno's okay. doing a little bit more. Techno's trying to push higher. I mean, we saw the yeah, tablet, but, uh, not the tablet. But, the, but again, uh, they're, they're them, sort of yeah. commis. I, I want to use a word like they're kind of commiserate entities. Yeah, yeah. But their business model is 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 focused on trying to bring these devices to to communities and to regions around the world where competition has been a little more scarce. And Apple or Samsung isn't working as aggressively in a lot of these regions to sell yeah. nicer products. Obviously, companies like Sony radically scaled back their distribution, and you're never going to see a phone like that in a lot of these regions. And you've That's got true. Infinix delivering 
one of the it's just one of the most fun mm -hmm. fully featured fully accessorized ready to go i mean like doing what i feel people would be doing on a sub 300 hundred dollar phone nothing's holding me back i can still play dead cells at an okay ish frame rate i'm still shooting really really nice photos and kind of mediocre video i have 256 gig of storage and yep. a memory card slot yeah yeah, to yeah. add more like this is the actual experience that i think people will want and then on top of that because i have this low power soc this phone is crazy easy to run for three days on a charge yes yes and that was You're the using other thing it that mostly that... for communication it is a monster and i feel it... people are going to care way more about battery life than whether or not they get five frames per second faster in alien isolation like <laughs> That's not what they're looking for. Uh, yeah, I could see the, I could see the, I could see the Reddit commenters right there. It's like, it, uh, I want, I want now five more frames, man, because I want to be able to see the, you know. No, I know, I'm with you. The it doesn't um, get the big enough N22. <laughs> like, cool. I guess. Does, how much does it bench, man? I want to know how much does it bench, because that's what I want to say from now on. I'm not going to say geek bench. I'm going to say what's the, how much does it bench? What's it bench? Yeah, how much? Can it lift its own weight? <laughs> I'll say that. Um, I, 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 is on my knuckles from dragging my arms on the ground dude i've been i, I started going back to the gym early this week and I'm it was so hard soft, dude. it was hard it was it was tough seeing okay. how out of shape i was but it was it's fun it is fun once you I, get over that i had hump. a i had a a proud of me moment that should not have been <laughs> so we're out on a walk just before setting up this podcast yeah and uh we go down to the little playground that's kind of off the park that's mm -hmm. near our our complex and uh, Lex is getting amazing at the monkey bars. Like she can do individuals, she can like do Tarzan swings and like skip rings and like she's she's doing really well. She kind of point blanks me and says like, well daddy, can you still do pull-ups? Flip. Oh <laughs> so my, I can't, yeah. I jump up right onto now. the bars and, and like I stop myself from swaying and I just do, it, it's not even really a pull-up because I'm in between two monkey bars. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not a chin-up. I don't know what you call it when your hands are parallel to your head as opposed to a pull up or a chin up. Yeah, but yeah. I do one with really good form, like smooth. I'm not like shaky or wobbling. I just do one. Yeah. And, and the strip. So on that note, that's, this is how we kind of do it. It's like, and the strip, oh, yeah, we, I shouldn't have said that word. Um, okay. So we're going to give Juan a second to come back. <laughs> Did did, did I did, you, did we both it just me? no it was just you uh, just so okay. you said the, you said the strip and so, it is like so I do one and the little strip muscles around my shoulders mm -hmm. are screaming oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> like it, it it hurt my my biceps everything else like I I kind of do like passive resistance and like push ups and walks and stuff like that but yeah I'm I can still do great, like I can like, do a, I can do a straight forty push ups I don't have a problem with that it's the pull ups but I, but I do, and wow I I'm did over one. And then Man, slowly let myself back down and got off the monkey bars and tried to play okay. it off like, yeah, I can still do pull-ups and stuff. What up? You know, hey, it's me. Marie even kind of walks over like, hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> but I was like, I would not have been able to do a second. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that was, that was the only one I could do. It's great. Yeah. Yes, I know. It's like championship league way right there. Yeah, actually on this, can we change the conversation? Uh, no, for me, it was more about like, I, I, I love running. And, and it, it, I know I don't look oh, like a runner, yeah. but I actually am a, I love running. Man, my um, knees and my and hips just can't handle that. I went running long. last, yeah. I, anyways, I don't want to make it sound like it's a geriatric show. Sorry. No, uh, uh, I tried going out running and I made a mistake of going running on, on the pavement first as opposed to doing treadmill to try to build the endurance up. And that just knocked the crap out of it. Because I was excited with, well, the reason I'm trying to talk about yeah, exercise. Let's trend. Because we want to start transitioning over to our little computing gadget in the in the end to hand sphere um it, absolutely yeah so i i went out i went running um and and i want to i do want to mention a lot about how juan loves his gadget and that it's just really unhealthy to a certain level um maybe we need to bring marie into this conversation one of these days and just no. like hey marie do you no. have anything I to think say? It, no. i think that would make it weird <laughs> so um... commentary from the missus how how do you find the TickWatch Pro Five handles your uh, your recent uh, gym visits and exercising and running? So I, okay, let me. Um, it handles it like a champ, but it, the the functions that they added into the the um, 
uh, I keep forgetting that the second display that we have in here are, are really what kind of throws me off because they've actually augmented it to make it a fully functional system now. It's not just that you can see your, you know, the time and the standard, just like basically your heart rate and whatever. You can switch over and see other metrics, but it also oh, yeah. changes the color based on the intensity of the workout yeah. that you're working. So if you're working out harder, the color changes to more of a tone of an orange, well, closer we, we to need red. To even just backtrack and explain, and especially yeah, yeah, yeah. for people who are who are listening to the podcast Sorry. as opposed yeah. to watching us try and stumble through this on the video. Thank you side for the support too. on that as well. So oh, yeah. the the Tick Watch Pro Five has two screens. There's the yeah. passive display that's a lot like like um uh like a classic analog not it's like not, a classic uh, uh the digital clock like uh, not a like clock, an old uh, digital clock like, yeah. like an old digital wristwatch that you used to get when you were a kid it's that display yeah. that two-tone basically an ink it's not e -ink, and, and you but... can see and, and you can see like like on those old clocks yeah how each number is made up of different pieces it's like cells yeah exactly and they're, they're all pre like a combination pieces okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so the newest version of the tick watch uh the simple profile. screen not yeah. the oled but the simple mm -hmm. screen now has a bunch of watch like um uh complications yeah so they've got little icons little alerts a battery gauge a constantly running ticker for your second hand yep. and the crown can scroll through other features on the watch that then show on the simple screen so without ever turning on the OLED, you can turn the crown and get it to show you uh, your heart rate, mm -hmm. your blood oxygen, yeah, your calorie sounds... burning, how many calories you've burned over the course exactly. of the day, mm -hmm. and it's got a compass. So you can leave it in compass mode or in calorie mode or in yep. heart rate mode. It'll stay on the mode that you're on. it never wakes up the OLED. It's still showing you all of that information. Then when you're in a workout, you can get even more information per that workout just on the, the simple color. display. And have you yeah, have you exactly. tried using the essential mode? I, well, I use the essential mode at night. So every time uh, okay. I, I turn on essential mode on a schedule because between 9.30 and, and 6 a.m. in the morning, I don't really sure. need you know the OLED to turn on and I don't want to have to worry about turning on night mode. So there's a way to set awesome up a count. Yeah. Because you can completely turn off Wear OS. Yeah, it, it becomes still... literally, li it lives onto that second display. And, it and it's just a second display. It never turns on the OLED, but it's still a watch. And it still measures your vitals. Heart rate. You could use it, yeah, for sleeping and The uh, compass for still works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. It's but what, so good. But what gets me the most is once TickWatch started to add more RAM, like when we went from that, that 512 to one gig of RAM, we gig. saw oh. the, yeah, we saw the exactly, the, the moment they did that, the performance improved like easy. Yeah. The combination of the W5 Plus Gen 1 with two gigs of RAM and so 32 good. gigs of internal storage on this thing is, it, cr it's fluid. It's it like, I, I even did makes, that in the video. I rebooted yeah. the watch on camera and the moment you see the home screen, you try to swipe away automatically butter. It's just it, smooth. smooth. Everything works perfectly. It makes and the pixel watch feel kind of pokey. It's, it's like, I, this is why I kind of wanted, I called it. It's like, it's like what I wanted the pixel watch to be. Um, oh, yeah. that, that I wanted that responsiveness. I wanted the Google assistant. I wanted all those in, in there. I, obviously I wanted, again, and I've said this before, I, I wish the pixel watch was a little bit bigger. Um, maybe we'll see something in a second generation, but, TickWatch is seriously starting to kid and, and battery life. That's the other thing where I'm getting a solid three days out of this. If I'm not working out solid three days, no issue. I, I, I need to take it back out because um, it's something that we kind of got confirmed after I had mostly finished my video and really I should have put it back in there. But um, our the PR rep that we work with at Mob. Yeah, the heart rate tracking, the, the GPS tracking, the, the GPS tracking. Yeah. And so I was doing a lot of hikes and so mm -hmm. i would say hey let me do a, wor a walking workout and i would track my workout with that i think that's why on mine i haven't seen so they, they claim that the battery improvement from the pro 3 to the pro 5 yeah. has gone from the pro 3 being rated for around 72 hours of mixed mode use mm -hmm. to the pro 5 being rated for 80 hours of mixed mode mixed use, mode use. And yeah. I think in my testing, where it was mostly GPS, and you go for a walk, it's a it's a shorter, I'm sorry, it takes you longer to go a shorter distance. So I think I was working the GPS harder. 
Yeah, I, I, I was think getting you're... poorer battery life on mm -hmm. my Pro 5 than I was on my Pro 3, but that still meant I was getting around two and a half days of runtime. Which is still... Even with yeah. an acknowledged GPS bug that was running the battery harder. So now I need to take it out again and see... And Am so, I, the, uh, full disclosure, if, we, we also got we got an update the day our video went live. So, uh, yeah. uh, there was there was a day one update as as surprise. No, I know it, it happens. Uh, yeah. a lot of companies do that. But it's the I, I'll I'll say there's like I've seen the okay. So I'll say this. I got a chance to play a little bit with some of Qualcomm's latest SOCs. Oh, at, I, I just uh, got to point this out here real quick because I know sure, sure. Barry is the guy. Uh, Barry Johnson is all about like, I'm not going to pick up a watch if it has like a day of battery life. So Barry Johnson says, I hope they make the Pixel watch larger and double the battery life. You yeah. know, if Google was not using a Samsung SoC, they would be able to put in a larger battery because your main board components would be a lot smaller. Right now, this tick watch, even with my GPS bug, is getting almost three times the battery life. Of a Pixel Watch, it, it's and I'm it's using crazy. it way more aggressively. Yeah, than and I and, and I think this watch. is the biggest difference where TickWatch is leveraging that second display, the essential mode in TickWatch, which you could do. You can probably go up to 30 days if you just run the watch yeah. fully charged on essential mode, like never turn just on the color. You could go so for almost good. a month. The the watch itself that always I love about this is that if it also it also has a presets in there that if the battery drops below a certain number I think it's like five or ten percent. You can set it. It, it out of the box. It's five percent, but you can set it. Yeah, yeah. you can ra you can raise it higher, and it'll jump to essential mode, and it'll still track the health information. It just disables the OLED panel. So yeah. the 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 leveraging between those technologies and the improvements over not only having more RAM, more storage, and the better SOC makes this a very, very it's it truly feels like uh the three ultra the the three ultra on crack. Because that's how fast and how how things are getting done. <laughs> I was gonna I, say on, on steroids, because it's fitness and it's that's, that's up that and is true. It is uh, it would that's... it's on roids, yeah. So it's basically <laughs> um, I, I will say I, I've been waiting for this for a while. Like I, you and I have had I'm, conversations I'm, offline. I am so happy with this hardware. Yes. I'm, I'm the so wait has been well worth it. Yeah. And like, it, I, I do want to yeah. highlight this from Michael Pepper tech. Cause this, I would actually say is still one of the weaker sides of this watch. He asks, sure. uh, the automatic exercise stuff. Has that improved? I had the tick watch pro three GPS and it was okay. I feel Wear OS and Mobvoi's implementation of fitness tracking on Wear OS is mm -hmm. super conservative. Because when I had the GTH, if it oh. detected walking or running style movement for more than a minute, I would get an alert and it would ask me if I wanted to start tracking a workout. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever had the, the tracking, especially on, because mostly for me it's hiking and walking or mm -hmm. cycling. And none of that is aggressive tracking on the watch. Like the watch isn't detecting a lot of movement with walking or cycling. For running, but I don't it does. think I've ever gotten a workout from from hiking or cycling in under two minutes. Yeah. So I'll be two to four minutes into an activity before it'll activate and ask me if it wants me to track a workout on a GTH, which is not running Wear OS. It was, it, I mean, it was super consistent. It, it would be like under a minute of activity, it would fire up and then ask me if I, if I wanted to track a workout. It, it's a, yeah, I mean, it, the, the TTH was, I feel like it just, it's built different. I mean, it's designed for a much more... Um, but, but again, I, I feel like that's probably a part of, when you have Wear OS, you have a full computer operating system on a watch. Mm -hmm. And I bet you there's something about that where it's, probably a bit more conservative in how it's running mm -hmm. that algorithm for detecting movement. Whereas if you have an RTOS, like these fitness tracker watches like have, Yeah, I was going to say, there's more these fitness, fitness trackers tracking. with a smaller yeah. battery can last for like two weeks on a charge. I feel like they can more aggressively track the fitness stuff yeah. and you're getting those better like uh, minute to minute types of interactions. I don't know that you can do that on Wear OS without a much bigger battery penalty. Yeah, because it hypothesis. have to be active and tracking. That's and... not confirmed from any of these smartwatch. You heard it first. It's fact. Juan said it. It's done. <laughs> it is what it. Come on, 
He said it. The man. Yeah. I mean, you were there. The guy was not right there. This side. Yeah, I'm, Sorry. I'm, the I'm dude did awesome. it. Awesome. I mean, if you think about it. So when you explain it so great. um so concisely and you actually put the connect the dots, man, it makes sense. But I mean, don't you find like experiences on like the the Poco and Xiaomi watches on the Much Huawei be- watches are really good at that. They're, and then they're, also on the Amaze Fits. Oh like, man, it makes you've fits. got those kinds of fitness tracking capabilities. I feel like they're they're more streamlined. They're not as fancy mm-hmm. and graphically intense, and there aren't as many fun things that you can do. But I find like that kind of fitness focus is way more aggressively managed on the lower power watches, and I still get four times the battery life of of oh, a really good Wear OS it, it, watch. Absolutely, and and uh, the last one, the uh, the new uh, the, the new the new one that Xiaomi announced at MWC is also yeah, really that looks one good. of the really the, it, not only just from function but design also looks really really good. Yeah. Um, some of the other things that they've done in the watch itself also that kind of got me was, uh, it it feels like a regular mob voice, like a tick watch, right? It didn't really change yeah. much. I like the crown. I like yep. the placement of it. Um, I feel like the software on that made me a little bit of updates to get more. Like we used to have a custom launcher before. We can customize it, change yeah. the setup of the, the apps. Um, I, I, everything that I wanted on it, I mean, I'm still waiting for WhatsApp to get us, to allow us to install. But like my Tesla app works fine. Uh, YouTube mm-hmm. Music allows me to download my content onto it. I can put yeah. up music. I can run outside. We don't even have to worry about bringing my phone. Um, the other thing is that one touch or the one measurement uh, setup option where you're able to measure multiple different uh, metrics at the same time without having to jump from one you know applet to applet to applet, that was also very nice. I like that one. It was it, there's some thoughts in there to make things more streamlined, um, and this does this. It, it does that. It does it very well. Um, I, I feel like the company is leaning into the software side of this conversation, knowing that unfortunately they're always going to be at a deficit. There, yeah, I mean, and, and we're going to talk. Boy are always going to have to be the B team because Samsung and Google are working together. On I know, and and I get so many. I got stuff. a few comments as well, like today on the video. Oh, and stuff, few. Like, My, I, like, so I shared the video on the Mob Boy subreddit, mm-hmm. and boy howdy, are those people that that is now no longer a Tick Watch fan oh. subreddit. That is just the place where people to go. Mob Boy broke their promises. They they lied. They said you were going to do the update, and then they didn't. And you're like, I mean, I feel like if you were any kind of enthusiast for this product or brand, you would be very, it would be very easy to see how it is not equal how all of the companies are getting to play with uh, new watch operating system updates. It, it's, it's tough. Like, I mean, seriously, we've been waiting for this watch for over a year? Like, oh, I don't yeah. Th- yeah, I don't think we had like the the, the three. Uh, so I'll say this: my three ultra has had retired a um, a very nice retirement plan on my wife's wrist because now she's enjoying <laughs> going from the TicWatch E over to the TicWatch Three Ultra yeah. that lasts three uh, two and a half uh, two days roughly, and she doesn't have to charge the watch every it's every just day. It's a little half. too bulky for Marie. I don't think I can get her on it. So she's she's stolen my Pixel Watch. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good she choice. She does yeah. not like the battery on that thing. I know. She, so that was. Like she's like I'm having to she's she's having to get it on a charger twice a day, it's, every it's day. Tough. It's it's tough. It's tough. And and, and even she's not doing updates, anything like LTE or yeah. You know, she's just responding to messages, checking her phone. Yeah. It, just typical Bluetooth content connectivity. And no, I'm with you. And I'm if she does you. sleep tracking and a workout, forget about it. Like, oh yeah, no no. Even yeah. any watch. The moment you start taxing it more than the usual, you know, respond and just stuff. Notifications. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so to, to kind of touch base with that, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, it does not have the Google Assistant built into it. And uh, like at the beginning of it, Well, it's I... because Mobvoi is lazy and they want to put out bad products, TK. <laughs> I was on the Mobvoi TickWatch subreddit. Subreddit. And, and it's you, because you, you got they the, hate you making got the juice. money. They never want to make good products. They, o- they only want to make their customers upset. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's they, they know what's going on over there. They know what's I, going on. So they removed yeah. Google Assistant and they broke their promises on support. So uh, th- all of those people there on the TickWatch subreddit will never buy a TickWatch ever again. I, I don't know why know somebody has that much passion that they would tech. go out of their way for something they don't want to buy just to be negative about it. Like if it's that much, if you feel that well, bad they about did, it. They, they did buy a TickWatch and then it didn't get software updates. And so that's Mobvoi broke their promise. They they committed. Fr- Someone said they on one of my comments they they committed fraud because 
they didn't put out Wear OS Wear OS 3. 3, which is what they said they yeah, were going to do. And they said that the W1, TK. was it the W1 Plus was going to be compatible? I mean, it, it was Fraud. all over. I mean, even Google said they were going to get it. It was in, in, in one of Google I.O.'s <laughs> announcement where Mavoy was one of the li one of the brands listed there. But, yep. you know, a year and a half later, two nope. years later, we only have two options for Google <laughs> Assistant on, on Android right now, no Wear OS. It's Samsung yep. and Pixel. Sa well, and we only have one option for Google Assistant on SOC. It, Samsung, Samsung SOC. Samsung SOC, exactly. I was about to say, I was going to say, what's Google the common SOC. thread? It's the SOC. And it's this is where we are. But um, th my comment on that was primarily was, I'll, I will say, initially, I was taken back because I did come from a 3 Pro, uh, 3 Ultra, yeah. and that does have the Assistant in it. And I started, after using it for about a day or so, and I started realizing that more and more, I really, like, I, I, I surround myself with assistants. So I never really ever went for my watch all the time. Like around the house, you know, if I'm yeah. out where I'm out, if I'm, if I'm out in the car, my phone has it. And if I say the command, sure. my phone responds. Um, I miss it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll dig in because yeah. I, I feel like one of the things that I did on my Pro 3 a lot was like set a timer. Well, for me, it was automation. That's what got me. I, what, I, what, I, what loved I, what I find I miss on those that, yeah. again. What I what I consider to be a good brief watch interaction. A watch is a timepiece. I did that a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, OKG and you know, set a set an alarm five minutes. Or I stuff. Like I would have I would have been happy if they included um, you know the the you know sister from a different Mister the A the, the A assistant. Um, I think she would have done well. Yeah. Like a lot of companies are actually Just like leveraging Fossil go. Did. Yeah, go go with Alexa. Like uh, we in, find in my actually, video, uh -huh. I really want Bing Chat. Microsoft should bring up. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Microsoft no, no, no. should bring a Wear OS app with with Bing Chat in there. Just get, okay. Yeah, no, right? I, know, I got it. GPT. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. Come on, dude. Uh, if Google you're, doesn't want to do it. There is there's plenty of room. Right there'll now there'll be somebody. Let developing. me tell you, Bard ain't getting it done. Bard is a little How bit hidden. If if Apple with their new like their new program because they're working on generative AI for yeah, their yeah. assistant, how great would it be if Apple delivered a Wear OS APK for Siri Smart Chat? Uh, Siri, oh my God, that would be. You epic. don't want to support Qualcomm? We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll and get all of like... your watch data from Fossil and from Mobvoi and from all your other players that you're trying yeah. to ignore. Well, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because probably we've, be better than we've seen integration of Alexa even with um, smartest, uh, not sorry, uh, fitness trackers. Xiaomi's yeah. had it in their fitness trackers since uh, late sure. last year, and it I had works. it on the Focals by North yeah. for heads-up display glasses, and Absolutely. I had uh, Amazon integration on that. So I, I hope, I'll say this: I, I hope Mob Voice uh, is thinking about potentially bringing that into the conversation because you, you can still get that interaction and you can still get the automation because you get the similar ecosystems to the way the assistant I, was I running. I think the frustrating thing is they can do this and they can actually end up with what would maybe be an even better product for mm -hmm. it. But if you saw the teething pains that Fossil went through, Fossil customers flipped out when they updated from Wear OS 2 to Wear OS 3. The watches were slower. They were yeah. buggier. It wasn't they had design, to install yeah. a whole new app because Google is deprecating the original Wear OS pairing app. Yeah. So anyone who wants to make a Wear OS watch now no longer has a unified app pairing platform. They all have to make their own specialty app. Fossil customers were pissed off about that. They lost Google Assistant. Fossil customers were pissed off about that. They tried to make up for it with Amazon. Fossil customers were pissed off about that. The I'm, new, I'm getting, the new I'm getting a trend from, uh, when were you saying that? But yeah, sorry. Series six reviews are under three stars, like the, the mainstream bread and butter, not the really nice like metal casing or any of mm -hmm. their hybrid watches, but like they're like two and a half stars right now on the Fossil website. And that's because their own customers are, are pissed off. This entire yeah. transition has been an absolute mess. And the thing that actually bothers me is I, whenever you would, would look at Wear OS in the past, people would go out of their way to disable Mobvoi software. They would get rid of the Mobvoi launcher. They would get rid of any duplicate apps with Google mm -hmm. Fit. Well, Google Fit is probably going to be deprecated over the next year too because they want you to start using Health Connect. So Fit it actually might be going away as all these little applets on our watches. It's going to yeah. really ma make me mad if... Because what I do is I'll, I'll switch back and forth between like an Amaze Fit, my Poco Watch, and uh, my my Mob Voice, 
but then I have them all synced to dump that information into Google to Fit. Fit. Yeah, so you have Google your Fit is my catch-all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really anxious. I bet you Google is probably going to make it more difficult for other partners to dump that health data into Health Connect. That's my prediction right now. They want you to use Samsung. They want you to use Fitbit. Well, I don't know about this AmazeFit app. We won't, we won't know if that's going to be a secure way to track your health data. So we won't let that connect to Health Connect. That's that's my prediction. I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope so too. But I'm starting to no, worry that I, I might not be. But anyway, the, I finally get everything. Leaves. Yeah. I, I'm I, again. That's the feeling I'm getting with how poorly Google is working with other partners in Wear OS and mm -hmm. how they have zero interest in supporting like other fitness trackers. So I finally get the TickWatch Pro Five all set up, and it's mm -hmm. pretty, but it's not faster. So every single in interaction that requires some kind of animation, mm -hmm. the TickWatch Pro 3 is faster. You get okay. a, a, a text message to your wrist. The second you look at it, the text message is up on your screen on, on the Pro 3. On the Pro 5, you lift your wrist, and then it turns on the screen, and then a card pops up that it, it's a text message, and then the, the card has to animate and open, and then you can read the text, text message, and then you can yeah. scroll through where the power of this new chip really comes into play are on things like Google Maps. So when you scroll through a map, that is butter. It is so, so fast. Mm -hmm. on, on my Pro 3, that's where the Pro 3 starts to kind of bog down a little as anything that's a little bit more graphics intense or more computationally intense. But the at-a-glance stuff, Wear OS 3 slows you down on every interaction to give you these prettier The body with smooth animation, yeah. No, I, I don't want that. I would love the power of this watch to be immediately. Oh, it's almost like you want to go into developer watch. option and shut, you know, cut the animation down in half. Actually, like you know, you, while we say that, I, I don't think you can, but I'm going to try. There is developer options in there. Yeah, you should be able to. But mm -hmm. no, I don't think it has the. Uh, um, I actually not take that back. I didn't actually look and see if the animation was still in there. But it, it's. Let's see. The 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 pro the well, I'll, I'll say this the the promise of where where the interactions and everything that runs on this is going to get better is is what I like about it. You're right. The inter sometimes when you're the notification when you're getting a message in there, it's not as cons like it's not as instant. Like I look at it and I you're right. I have to kind of wait an extra second for it to light up and give me the message. Animation scale. <laughs> is it set it. to 1? It is. is it, okay, set it down to half. I'm going to turn this to animation scale 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Oh, this might help. We still have the problem of this two-stage like card animation yeah. thing that I hate, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna we're we're gonna try this. So I've just turned all of the animation scales to 0.5. Okay, let it go to sleep. I'm gonna send you a message. Okay, whenever you're ready. We're doing it live, folks. We're doing it we're live. We're doing it live. Okay, so I just sent you. A, well, actually, I just sent you two messages. I don't know why, but I sent you a That's message. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give this and this time from the right phone. Not to. Nope. Come on. Oh, are you going to be weird because I've got like three different other, because I've got my PC up and everything too. No, it's sent. Man, I didn't get the actual notification to my wrist. Oh, let's try it again. Okay. Yeah, let's try it one more time. You ready? And let's go. Sent. Why is it sending it as a graph graphic though? <sighs> that is faster. Okay. okay. We're Animation scale 0.5. Mm -hmm. you can barely see when the card pops up. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it. looks like a graphical error. <laughs> <laughs> it's a but it, it pushes past the card to then just animating directly into the message itself. Okay. So I like that. Okay. That looks broken. But it's faster. What people would be expecting, but that was faster. I, I might even okay. play like Greg is saying you just turn animation scale off. I might even turn it off. <laughs> It'd be like I hate instantaneous slow animation. Um, the, so, so the one much. thing that did throw it, me off, it feels like you, you pick up an iPhone and it feels like you're moving through molasses because everything yeah. has to kind of like emerge. It's and like, it's, I just want to do the thing. I don't want that on. A, I especially don't want that on a watch, man. That kills me. You, you I, want I'm it to basically moving respond, my yeah. hand. I should not have to wait for it to do the thing. <laughs> yeah, you don't want oh. the graphical interface, the transitions, the zoom, the wah. 
No, I know. But it, I did it, a demonstration, like, it just, like, I sent a text message to my wrist, and, like, the Pro 3 versus the Pro 5, this is Wear OS 2 versus Wear OS 3. And when you match the gesture, the Pro the Pro it, 3... I'm pretty sure it will get better with the... Much faster. Just exactly. there. I yeah. just want it there. Okay, now, now you got me going in there. I got to go in there and change the animation real quick. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I think the thing that, that bothers me is like, I'm not trying to tell people everything is fine. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to make excuses for what are some obvious deficiencies between these various platforms. If you need to be on the cutting edge of software, the only thing that's gonna make sense is Google or Samsung. But I'm a hardware guy, and I think I've always tried to present that. Like, I care more about what the bleeding edge of hardware and these features really look like, and that's why I was an LG fan for so long. It definitely wasn't because I was a software over hardware guy. Did you um, turn off, did you change the animation scan on everything, or the transition, or did you just do it on one, on all of them? Oh, I right? did it on all three. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I did animation scale 0.5 on all three. Um, this is the hardware I want on my wrist. It is snappy. And I'm willing to exist in a different tier of software support to get these features. Um, oh, but I'm man, getting to a point fast. where... This is... Sorry. Yeah. Not, it's quick, right? Much... No, no. It's Even with pretty. the crown. Uh, try to go sh uh, switching around with the crown, like opening up the notification shade and the... No and the uh, oh, your, uh, it, but right. Every everything is faster. Like oh, you that is prettier. Oh, I like that a lot. I, I don't miss the transition. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with this level of... Oh, uh, and especially you know, like sliding through your side panels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, oh, every, that's quicker swiping too. Swiping away, everything is great. So I may actually turn it off, but uh, speaking of which, uh, I, the one thing I did have a concern with it when uh, Greg uh, was uh, hinting, not, linking me to a, uh, a custom watch face for Android Wear uh, that was really, really cool because he did one for, for the best of our week and he changed the custom you know, face on it. That's right, that's and nice. I tried using it because he even did one that, that had Ultra Instinct on it but it was killing the battery for me for, for some reason. I, anything that's not mob voice um, specific, battery yeah. life was like, it was tanking. Like I could, I wasn't able and to even go to a day and a half. I don't know that Wear OS 3 is going to extend any support for custom launchers except for Samsung. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to have the the mob voice app drawer back because you, I, you I go like through the... these big dumb panels. It's this continuous could... like six hours swiping. I like the... Yeah. Yeah, or like the pixel and launcher. You could which... easily, you could easily go to the the two app panel mm -hmm. and have plenty of room for all of that, like the like we had on Wear OS too. Um, but something tells me, unfortunately, that we probably won't get that either. And again, I'm I'm really tired of this narrative where it's like, but Mobvoi is doing this to make their products crappy. Um, it, it isn't. No. The, the, the thing story. I've been pointing out to a lot of people is like my Pro Three is currently running Wear OS two point four two. Did it launch with Wear OS two point four two? No, no it I, did not. I, I think it was so. Mobvoi is going through the effort of updating their watches. I feel that's good evidence to to juxtapose against Fossil's transition to Wear OS three being an absolute nightmare for the company. To say. Mobvoi probably feels the better experience on that watch is it, this software with the yeah. patches that they've been able to put out. The 3 Ultra has aged very nicely. Like I was consistently, well. I was still on the watch even if it was a year and a half later. I mean, I've tried other watches as well and I've always gotten back to it. So the implementation of how it was done with the software update that it's received, it was more of a consistent experience, which I felt like was more enjoyable. It may not have been the yeah. latest version of Wear OS, and I know we all waited for it. We heard it. We had conversations with the, with different people as well. And even, like I said, Google mentioned that they were going to get it. Um, but yeah, like two years later, we are we're really have a very different camp now. We have Samsung and then everybody else. Uh, yeah. it, and it's a, tough, it's a tough conversation to explain why we don't have it. Because well, and, and now people are going to so, think like, the, yeah. It, it, now it's feeling so obvious that like Fossil is in a good position with Wear OS 3. Mobvoi is putting out their first Wear OS 3 watch. Yeah. And now Google's ready to announce Wear OS 4. <laughs> hey, look at that, kids. Welcome and I feel to the like club. If this is always going to be. It's like NVIDIA it all over the place, right? It's like, hey, we're releasing one right? to make you excited about the other one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if this is going to be the way it's always going to be, my plea is for watch manufacturers, like the Fossil Group, 
Mm -hmm. They make great watches. I've really enjoyed Mobvoi hardware. At some point, give up. Don't always be the whipping boy because right now it's just making Samsung look better than they deserve. And, and that's Samsung what I'm trying to say. Samsung does the good software. Exactly. Updates. They're going like, to be like, well, Samsung has it. Why? What? You know. So they have the better watches. I'm like, it? well, yeah. If you can bring just a few of these features, if you can reach out to Microsoft and get a better voice assistant on an RTOS watch, if you can find a way to give me speech to text replies. Because I had those on the Focals by North, and that was not running a Google operating system. We're still, system. We're still waiting to see OS. what Google is doing with that acquisition. But yeah, sorry. Go ahead. But we've seen... You know what I used to have speech-to-text replies on? Mm -hmm. LG Tone headphones. Oh, my God. If really? I had speech... On the, on the old neck bands, mm -hmm. you would push a little activation button, talk into your headphones. It would read the message back to you. To confirm that that's what you said, and then it would text as a reply. Didn't if I that. had that okay. on Bluetooth headphones five years ago, bring it to an Amazfit T Rex, mm -hmm. and I don't think I'd be sad leaving Wear OS. I, I could walk away. There are a few of these little applets and a few of these little watch faces and complications and and custom things that I, I would miss. But I, boy, howdy, would I not miss them to the tune of almost three weeks of battery life the t-rex is a monster it's a monster of a watch i mean i miss i, I haven't i haven't heard any anything re, re, recently of it like because i think i got the last one i got was the gts and i think you went with the gts the slightly smaller one if i remember last yeah. time we went we, we so, picked different versions i i i mean like the gts and the it was gts and gtr i can't oh, remember oh no no yeah they're, i went to, yeah yeah was what one good. was the r one was the s yeah but i i still keep coming back to this chunky bugger because it's just a beast and especially because like we've been doing more bike riding and hiking and stuff like that like oh absolutely yeah yeah. this no, thing no. is a tank you want to be I able to have that battery life. microphone on this get 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 pick up those called um actually one of my headsets that i uh that i picked up uh, for uh, not headset uh, helmets for for riding um uh, is running har um, harmony not harmony um what is Huawei's uh, os is it harmony os it is Harmony, no right? No way, really? It's running Harmony. Like on the box, it says Harmony OS. I'm like, what? Built-in headphone, uh, built-in speakers, decent speakers on right above the ears. So it plays audio Man. to your ears, but it doesn't cover the ears. Uh, That's but it's, nuts. But it specifically said Harmony OS. I was like, oh my God, Huawei has a, has a headset. Like this is where Huawei's headset. It, it, I know again, we were, I mean, a, a lot of people counting out Huawei when they tried to make their own OS function, but... It's like they didn't they didn't back down. I no, mean, they, they, they they definitely they used the it more for uh, IoT and, and different things. But like it was a surprise because I, I just did not expect it that it was going to be. But this is it, what we had to. This is the piper we had to pay to get yeah. Samsung to stop fighting them with Tizen. Yeah, so I know it was it was the you conversation. Had to give Samsung the sun, the moon and the stars and also that they would have stop having this competing uh uh, OS, yeah. OS in this space, but like even like what Gabaletta was saying is like, when you remove Wear OS from the equation, ties in on this kind of hard, on Samsung's older, not as good SOCs was running better and had better battery life. I Those remember. I remember when we went when we switched from Samsung Android. Customers had to make. Yeah. I, I remember that that conversion. It bugged me initially, but then they made it so seamless because the UI never changed and the functions never yeah. changed. They transitioned everything and it worked well. Um, and then now but they Tizen, come back. Yeah, Tizen, Tizen had, gave you better battery life on on wearable. <laughs> absolutely, and on yeah. smartphones probably will do the same. But it it was always a a, a debate of you know Google allowing another operating system to thrive to start growing. I mean we you know mm -hmm. we saw Windows Windows uh, mobile kind of go out. It was basically Android and basically you know, for the most part we oh, basically man. have Android and iOS and having but another one come think, up. Just think like if Microsoft delivered some software cuz uh, I had the Microsoft band and it, mm -hmm. I mean it was really cool hardware but man their product QA was garbage. Um, those bands, like, they were not very well built. No, I remember. But, yeah, yeah. But the apps, the support, the fitness tracking, the management, all of the extra. And, like, 
you bundle that with an assistant, if you could bring that software to Wear OS, like it would be a completely different animal, it would be a completely different conversation. If, if Microsoft could partner with an Amazfit style company and make yeah. a Surface watch. Oh man, yes, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it would be it, so good. It would be, oh. it, it would definitely make everybody at stand at that point. I, I, for sure it would have been we need more competition in this market right now because right now we're, we're, we went from having so many options to practically just it's either this flavor of ice cream or the other flavor you depending which camp you are camp samsung you're getting this flavor and otherwise you're getting a, you know other companies yeah. trying to adapt to it um it, it's the rich tech westland yeah. i don't know if you're feeling the same way but i kind of feel like now we just got to treat these as two different product uh, two different platforms mm -hmm. there's Wear OS for Samsung and Google, and then there's Wear OS for everybody else. Yeah, and they're different things. There's I, no actually, unified the, the Wear only OS app, anymore. Um, not even uh, Google uses a uh, uh, the the Wear app. They use their own. There's the Pixel Watch they app. Use the Fitbit. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, and then you have um, uh, what's it called? Samsung started using their own Wear app. Uh, also, yeah. anyways, they're the the Wear. Fossil the, the... had to make their. That was another like so yeah. many complaints on the Fossil website for these negative reviews of Fossil watches. I updated my watch, and you made me install a new app. And it's Google like when HBO Max back. dropped HBO, and now it's Max, and you have to download a whole separate app. But Google is sitting back and yeah. letting the two companies who were most responsible for keeping Wear, Ole Wear OS alive at all, Fossil and Mobvoi, yeah. they're letting Fossil and Mobvoi take all the brunt and all the anger and all the hate from their own customers. And they're not joining that conversation to back up their partners because they want Samsung to look better. And yeah. that's absolutely what they needed to do it, to get it, Samsung it's, um, on board. It, it, I'm making yeah. this a completely emotional appeal. I have no insider information. No one from Google has ever responded I, to my questions about Wear OS as a strategy. They mm -hmm. always side circumvent my questions on stuff like that, so I've never gotten confirmation. But for me, we see a clear, consistent track record of public-facing behavior that indicates most of the problems are not Fossil and Mobvoi. I don't have any evidence that convinces me otherwise that they're all equally getting the same support and the same resources from Google. And somehow Samsung is able to make a better product out of newer software and Fossil and Mobvoi just want to make bad things. They're making the bad decisions. They're, they're, they're not picking out the good, the good features. There's that list. And so, yeah, Steve Pogue, why doesn't Mobvoi call out Google about any of this? Well, if you do any development work with a massive organization like Google, I'm sure you never have to do things like sign corporate NDAs. I'm sure that's never No, a thing. no, they wouldn't do that. No. So, I, and also it's kind of, unfortunately, you're in a position where you're making your brand on this type of software. You used to get a lot of publicity from it. Like yep. four or five years ago, you would have these great write-ups on the Google blogs. There was like a Wear OS blog and there was the Google blog and the Android blog. You can go back like five years and like, these are the 20 most awesome watches that are gonna be coming out this year. And you'd see Fossil and you'd see Citizen and you'd see uh, Casio and Mobvoi mm. and all, all these exciting things. And Google was working with their partners to present all of these options as part of a packaged ecosystem. So you don't go out there and throw Google under the bus because then all of that stuff just gets revoked then you're completely off the island. You're completely off the reservation. And if there's any proprietary or protected information in those communications with Google, then you have to face lawsuits. And even just the threat of interacting with an army of lawyers from Google is, is enough. That's why I'm kind of making this plea like, I've played with the Mobvoi GTH Pro. That's running in RTOS. It's a completely custom, low power operating system. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with Wear OS. It's a great little fitness tracker. Take the pinning, the underpinning of that, bring me a few more smart features, and I feel like that's gonna be better for the company health long-term because they're not gonna keep fielding this small community of Wear OS owners who are pissed off. Yeah, They're not yeah. gonna get trashed in their own subreddit anymore. They'll be able to build and move forward with other fitness communities mm -hmm. and then build on that with some smartwatch features. I feel like that long term is probably better for the health of Fossil and for Mobvoi. Fossil has the benefit of having a hybrid watch line. 
Mobvoi hasn't really played with much outside of Wear OS. Their RTOS watches are, are, are a lot more limited. Very, very look limited. At like, yeah. Fossil just came out with a whole new line of hybrid smartwatches. They're getting away from well, and, and, the and Google Fossil, ecosystem. In, in Fossil's with their defense, too, products. though, I mean, Fossil has a much bigger. Um, you know, watch uh, ecosystem, uh, the design oh, yeah, and development. They make watches. Yeah, they, they, they've been in the watch business much, much longer. <laughs> they make. And I feel like uh, Mobvoi is a uh, much Movado smaller team. And who, who else is a part of Fossil? The Fossil Group is like twenty or thirty different watch brands. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. But like you know, but and by, by, by comparison, the Mobvoi team obviously would be a, a much, much smaller team comparing yeah. to what what Fossil has. And and I think Mobvoi is focusing on what works for them, and I feel like right now with the with this version of the software coming out and this hardware, uh, they changed right. I mean, they gave us a crown. We didn't have to, we used to have the two button configuration for the longest time, and now we have a crown, and they've done a decent job on the crown and how it works. Um, yeah, I we we need to, we need to keep in mind that the the videos that we dropped are day one videos, right? So these are early early hands on software got updated. We're gonna get better. We we need to kind of keep going and coming back at this reviewing it after two three months or maybe after another major update or something to, that that brings in new features so that you can keep the conversation going. And I feel like that's what made me enjoy the original Mob Boy uh, watches. It it was that that experience that it kept getting better as time went on. Um, are we going to go back to the way it looked like on, on Wear OS 2? Probably not. But, you know, let's see how we can make it better uh, with whatever options that Google allows them to do and what they're functionally able to do outside of having uh, basically a Pixel or a, a Samsung watch. And, again, to their benefit, this is literally the only the only two companies you can get the assistant on right now uh, running anything yeah. Wear OS 3. But we'll see what 4 does. Maybe 4 changes the game. Maybe it reverts us back. But we'll see. I couldn't but, remember Skagen. And Skagens were some of my favorite traditional timepieces oh man i still yeah. occasionally bring out i have a skagen hybrid okay okay and you know i'm seriously looking at um because i haven't rocked a fossil since os2 launched yeah that was the last fossil i i, I played with and i didn't keep it um i i stuck with mobvoi because i liked the better battery life I um like, I like but the design. i'm seriously looking at their new hybrids because they've got pebble like screens oh I miss Pebble. So that was the other one. Instead of having Pebble, analog Pebble screens have been, with like yeah. a weird little like ticker notification. Um, it's an, it it's uses a, an e-ink display. It's, I think it's an e I don't Let me just look it up. I'm, I'm trying to use words and Memories stuff. and <laughs> pulling, pulling on historical things. Yeah, no, no. Um, while you're thinking about that, actually, at some point, I do want to talk about a little bit that, that tablet that you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah, yeah. We'll the right uh, I just, Robo I just wanted to or Robo? Up here. Robo and Kayla? Robo and Kala. Kala. Okay. I don't. I don't you. know if it's Kala or Kayla. I actually should need I, to ask them. Well, because we I you didn't. When you sent me the topics for for tonight, I, it was, uh, um, it was text. So I had to write. I, I read it. Kayla. So yeah, like real, Robo real, Kayla. Real, real quick, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. But if you were a fan of the Amazfit Blip of the Pebble, mm -hmm. or even back, because I still have one. It doesn't work anymore. But I had the Qualcomm Talk. I, so that was yeah i remember the talk oh, yes a good watch it was such I a chunker though watch. there was like a big watch though like it was one of the bigger oh, it was huge uh, yeah it was huge but it had that trans reflective display yeah with a very simple backlight um it had speech to text notification <laughs> replies oh my god it got what? like a week of battery life no way the qualcomm Say talk more. The to it was called the talk for a reason because you could talk talk to on it. you could talk to it no, um yeah. So this is the the Gen Six Hybrid Stainless Steel, and it looks so much that, like that a, pe actually, a Pebble Round. That looks and nice. I love that look. So it's got fitness tracking. It, it just doesn't have like speech to text. Um, I think you can take calls on it, but it's still its own proprietary Fossil app and. Uh, um, Oh, they have some nice designs for, for, for ladies as well. Like, that looks nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's what's cool is like the Fossil group takes mm -hmm. the same tech shell and then puts it in a bunch of other, uh, other form factors. Yeah, yeah. But you have an accelerator, accelerometer. You've got heart rate tracking. Um, I like the accelerator feature, though, by the way. Does it go pretty yeah, fast? I like, need an accelerator feature bad. Yeah, zero um, to But 60. then also Google is ending support for iOS devices. That was the OS. Yeah. So now if you want to get something that can work between an iPhone or an Android phone, you've got to go 
to another fitness band or fitness tracker and the new fossil hybrid is going to support iphones or android phones but they just look so good mm -hmm. they just look like like good what that oh, one that one looks like this one in blue yeah oh, blue. steel and blue yeah no that's that's a classic look all that's right a classic i, I it's it's <laughs> I'm staying I mean, away from my crazy expensive, but I mean, like 250 bucks. I, I might need to just get one. Hey, man, uh, last time we were talking on the chat, I dropped 250 bucks. Let's just, just be honest with each I'm other. I'm not buying it today, but Father's yeah. Day is coming up. So Ooh. that might be a thing. Honey, if you're listening, uh, you know, just uh, just fossil. That's all I, I have to say. I also wanted to get a power washer, but I might need a watch. <laughs> Priority level list is like power it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fossil yeah, stainless, yeah, yeah. stainless steel casing. It, it, that really I, I, I'm gonna say strap. for Father's Day though, power washer made it maybe the thing because I got a power washer not that long ago. It is worth it. Let's just say that it is worth it every penny. Damn. It's a lot of water, but it's worth. It. But no, I know. Oh wait a minute. I I don't think they had this at launch. The the fossil hybrid does support Amazon. Oh, the Voice assistant. assistant. Yeah, I, I read somewhere where yeah, fossil fossil was basically shifting over to Amazon. I, I think that's they are going to be their their main focus on this. But this would be <sighs> this would be something to try. This would be something to try. Just to, also you know, just just to point it out casually is uh, a lot of their Wear OS watch reviews are three stars and lower. Their hybrid reviews are like four and a half stars and up. So fossil well, owners seem to, to like, like yeah. So then you the know hybrid better it's... than the Wear OS watch. I just, agree. You know, just saying. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, let's let's talk about this this tablet real quick because uh, I should probably uh, not talk for three hours <laughs> on this podcast. So this, um, actually, you know what? Here, I, let me try and do this. I don't know if this is going to mess up. Yeah, I saw um, you setting it up at the beginning, so I thought we were going to try to do the uh, the extended view. So I was going to switch you over. Uh, let me put you back here. Let We're going to switch see. here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is the Robo and Kala. So this is a tablet. Robo and Kala is a company that was started by a former uh, Xiaomi product head. Okay. Um, are you going to focus? Come on, Panasonic. Uh, there we go. Here we are. So uh, this is a detachable slate tablet. Um, oh, it's... I'm touching the screen. Uh, this is a, a 2K plus OLED. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really pretty screen. And it's built very similarly to something like a Surface, a Microsoft Surface. Yep. Uh, but it is running uh, Windows 11. This is Windows on ARM. Yes. And it's using the Snapdragon uh, 8CX Gen 3. Nice. So it is a tiny, tiny bit scientifically less powerful than... The Surface Pro 9 SQ3, but okay. in daily use, I would be very hard pressed to find any specific differences uh, in in daily operation. You're getting the incredible battery life of an ARM chip. Uh, mm -hmm. Windows on ARM has gotten really good. You know, the the funny thing about Windows on ARM is uh, it's really gotten me into checking out more Android and Linux. Yeah. Programs because you have a Linux subsystem. So I have Ubuntu installed on this yeah. and you have an Android subsystem. So I have Android 13 installed on this and uh, wouldn't you know it, it performs really well as a full desktop operating system style tablet mm -hmm. that can also use Android and Linux programs. So they've got a, ver a clever keyboard dock, mm -hmm. which I didn't realize at the time um, so it snaps in and it's got a hard uh, swivel hinge. Oh, okay. So the, the hinge is not floppy like mm -hmm. on uh, the surface. Well, because that one's dock. more a uh, fabric that they, they really, it was basically a yeah. fabric keyboard connected, but yeah. And, and there's like a faux vegan leathery feel on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons why I think they went rigid and I did not know about this when I was, I did like a silly unboxing video. Yeah, I saw I it on, on, on the Patreon. On Patreon. Yeah. So when you disconnect this, a little blue light starts flashing here on the keyboard. This keyboard has a battery and a Bluetooth radio in it. So you still have, uh, oh wait, it's, I, I turned it off and I've got a Windows hello myself back into this, hold on one second. So this has, oh, 
just get it set back. There we go. Huh. So when you detach it from the keyboard, this is a, a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Nice. So unlike the Surface Pro where you detach the keyboard and it's totally inert, yeah. this is a wireless. So you can set the tablet up, pop, pop the keyboard and trackpad off, you know, do whatever work that you need to do. Blah, does blah, it blah, have blah, uh, video output? Right does it support uh, uh, video over USB-C? It does. Like the, uh, see, that, that, that's what makes this. Then so you connect two, it to a TV and you, yep. Yep. And, yep. You can, and you can connect it to a TV, pull the keyboard walk over to your couch, have all of that going. I've also used them with the Unreal Air and the Rokid Max. Yeah. The, one of the differences between um, this and the Surface, the Surface has the proprietary Surface Connector. charger, that little mm -hmm. magnetic charger. Instead, the Robo and Kala keeps their stylus uh, charging oh, on the, the side of the tablet, more like an iPad. Side. Yeah. So I like that position, um, yeah. I mean, I like it too. I kind of like the uh, the OnePlus. I think the OnePlus solution up on the top is a little bit more elegant than the side. Mm -hmm. But the Surface, that's built into the keyboard. So yeah. your stylus hides in the keyboard. I think that's kind of trick because then you get that dual angle on the yeah. keyboard. a little bit of extra. But yeah. giving up the dual angle, it's kind of cool having the Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad. Like, that's already been handier than I was expecting it to be. So I, I am having a blast with this thing. Windows Hello does the face unlock just, just like any other Surface product. It's super slim like the Surface. In mm -hmm. fact, it's even just like a tiny bit thinner mm -hmm. because the Surface Pro 9 SQ3 is still built largely in the same frame as the Intel Surface it's Pro the 9. Yeah, it, it, it's more antennas, but same, same uh, chassis, yeah. Same chassis. This is that little bit thinner. And so right now they're sold out. So Robo and Kala, they're out of stock, but the, the, the total kit of getting the tablet with 16 gig of RAM, 512 gig of storage, there is a little pop plate. I don't know how to open it yet. It's not a pin tool, mm -hmm. but there's a little pop plate right there that you can get to the SSD if you mm -hmm. wanna upgrade the SSD, just like the Surface. Um, this whole kit I think is selling for 1100. Oh wow! So you get you get Much you cheaper. get this for yeah. eleven hundred as opposed to 17. Surface Pro Nine, and then you buy a tablet. I mean, then you buy a keyboard cover and the stylus separately. Yeah, so that was it's a separate a, kit. It's a pretty competitive. Uh, any any LTE PC. connectivity or any five G? No, 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 no. So that that is one of the things that is okay. different from the Pro Nine. Excuse me. I'm going to switch back to my main camera here. Yeah. But um, this is very early uh, impressions for me, and uh, I, I, I've been very pleased. I like it. I the like Surface it. Pro 9 was such a refreshing battery life, daily productivity. I enjoy. I truly enjoyed using and traveling it's with the so Surface good. Pro 9. I, we traveled so many places with it. I took it to Qualcomm with me, and that was so fun. It was. And we ha we even had our uh, we did our live stream on the Surface Pro Nine when I was in uh, when we were uh, when I was in Maui. It just it's that much enjoyable of it's a piece so of good. tech. And so you versatile. you lose um, you you lose that immediacy of having the built-in radio of it being its own. But you could run Ready for connection. on it, like you could run Ready for connect your phone yeah. into it and bam, you got five G. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so I I, we just recently wrapped up, like uh, we both spent some time with the, uh, the, the OnePlus pad, yes. the, the OnePlus tablet. Yes, and yes. I really like the, the bang for buck performance mm -hmm. on that OnePlus tablet. And if you're, yeah. you're looking at a tablet as being kind of like a gaming multimedia consumption device that can do some work and it does work well, mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. Sure. As soon as you go back to proper windows and you see the difference, like I want to work on this document and I open this document on an Android tablet, I'm editing in a much more simplified, not fully feature complete version of Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Yeah. And then I open up that document on this Robo and Kala and man, it's... It's the full Microsoft Office. It's like it, the it's, full. It's, it's so refreshing. I know. Go. Yeah. No, that that feeling where you oh. like, oh, it just works. 
I'm not. I'm not going to go back to the to the second, but I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do this on on camera here. Let me let me see if I can if I can get this, because like I said, it's also running Ubuntu. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I want to show. Go more. No, don't open the media player. Come on. Uh, where is my new? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make make me big here. Oh, sorry. Yes, we're too too many people no, it's playing. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, okay, I got it. I got it. I got you it. got it. Good, good, good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set this right here. And it's weird because I'm kind of balancing it on my shoulder. Um, on like a Core i5, GIMP takes a really long time to load, and there's something about Windows and GIMP where, especially when it's scanning through like your fonts, it mm -hmm. takes forever. But I can install Linux GIMP. Oh, that's true. Yeah. On a Windows on ARM tablet. And I'm just going to tap this right now. Don't let me down, tablet. Oh, did I swipe it away? Hold on. Sorry. I might have. Oh, nope. There it goes. Oh, and it's open. So there's like a little momentary lag where it's launching Linux mm -hmm. and then launch firing <laughs> up GIMP. And it's faster than what I can do on Windows, on, on regular uh, on, on, X6, on a X86. Core i5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm wearing it. Now, again, beefy workstation you know i've got like a thread ripper in here or like a core i7 or a core i9 probably neck and neck with something like this but this is like a ridiculously low power solution as soon as you move over into linux applications they are so much faster than emulating x86 um, windows yeah, programs exactly and i, and I think it's that's not close we saw the same similar benefits with the ATX Gen three on yeah. uh, on on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the surface. It, it's one on why I missed the service so much, and, and, and I felt like it, it was it was the most enjoyable piece of tech. I, again, I, I I we needed to make a video about it at the end because that was the <laughs> the conversation, and it was like it was hard because well, I was using it. But, it well, it, well, I'll tell you. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm missing the Surface Pro Nine a little less. Yeah, I know. No, I know. You're like <laughs> you I'm went like all the way. Now. No, seriously. Like even with um, connectivity not being there built into it, you can still tether technically to your PC to your phone. Yeah. You're, you're 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 not losing that much there. You probably get better battery life because of it because you don't have to worry about the motor. Fired up Kden Live. Oh my I god. I fired up uh, Inkscape. Mm -hmm. The Linux build of Inkscape. I can't get Linux DaVinci Resolve working because it needs an explicit discrete GPU that I remember. Can't yeah, see. it. Lo it. I think it installs, but it just doesn't. It run. installs. Yeah, and um, it doesn't so, see. The, it doesn't but, see. But the even GPU. the Linux version of that, it can't see the Qualcomm GPU. It can't see the Snapdragon Adreno. Um, but everything else, everything else has just been awesome That's audacity nice. is a little flaky too so i'm okay. having a hard time importing audio into audacity but i need to play around with that more because i think i might have found a workaround and, and so i'm sure I there's some yeah you like, may be able to change the the settings in there uh, audacity yeah. has a lot of options in there to, to get things right but yeah well and then it's also exciting. it's it's you do have to futz with your file management because there are some things linux apps can't see in your windows file structure oh but okay once you figure out like where you just need to dump files, like I need to import this photo and work on it in real GIMP. Man, it's so good. It is so it is. good. It is very nice. So you just, I saw the video that just dropped on the Patreon. So if you guys haven't had a chance to make sure to check out the, the description um, for Juan's Patreon, I think it's patreon.com forward slash some gadget guy, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, yeah. Hey, man, I've, I've done the and show a few we're, times. We're going to have a lot more to say. I, I will be doing a sponsored video with Robo and Kala, Very but nice. there is something happening here. Windows on ARM is getting really good, it's... but I really feel the saving grace of Windows moving forward is this broad interoperability. I mean, for all the things that we have to give up and how annoying it is that Microsoft is starting to do like more service ads in windows and windows is more of a service it's not an operating system that you buy every generation it's kind of just free yeah it's like 365 and then you get updates yeah i know but for all that i don't want people to lose sight of the fact that like it really has become the amoeba os on, on this, on, on a, an ARM SOC that, you know, multi-core scores is a little less powerful than a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, mm -hmm. I can run full 
PC, Windows, Windows Universal apps, Linux programs, and Android apps. I, I am not held back at all. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, and I, it's, 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 a, it's exciting. It's, it's like a, I, I want to say it, it's exciting to see what they're going to come up with uh, later on this year when we see if, what, what happens with Orion and the, the next generation of uh, ARM, ARM processors yeah. and what Qualcomm's trying to push with it. But it, it, Windows is catching up. But I think it's the fact that you're able to, like you said, in the ability of having the, uh, of running Linux, the ability of having the ability of running Android apps, that's what's making it more functional because you are getting the ability of leveraging the ecosystems. You're not stuck with one, yeah. you know, like just having an iPad with an M1 and you know running still iPad OS as opposed to getting it to run you know Mac OS. Yeah. Since the, technically the hardware can handle all of that, uh, we've seen it in the air. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. just you, and and like you were asking, like you plug in another monitor and it just shows up and it's an extended desktop. And yep. that's so much more functional than going through stage manager or, you know, you get a proper dual display where Dex is usually one, one, one UI. Dis- yeah. One UI. One, a different yeah, UI yeah. on the tablet. Like, <sighs> it, oh, it's it, so good. It was, it, it is not, and it was, it is enjoyable. And I'm glad that you're able to play with, with, with a little bit more than, what we had because it's been what, what it was we're in may almost in june like it's been about five five months now since i haven't had it because we had to return it and i think i returned mine in january early january and i still like i there there are so many videos where i like i pulled up my surface laptop go to and i compared that against the the one plus pad and you're like man i really wish i could have had the surface pro 9 to do up that against comparison. this one plus pad to kind of illustrate these differences it, but tech um, tech I'm yeah be, sometimes I'm be using this robo and kala a lot i like to do it. stuff like that i'm gonna get so. used to saying that name robin kala so I, I like it um speaking of that I, i've already been playing back through spartan assault because that's <laughs> one of my favorite top down twin stick shooters and it runs really well i like it <laughs> well i mean tablet, the, so. the, the 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 ecosystem is fun to play with it's easy it's getting a lot better than where we had it before uh, and you have a lot more options as far as implement of apps and things that run in it. It just it does not have that one to one yet to what to regular Windows on, yeah. on like an i7 or an i5. But sure. the one thing I will say is every day more more development is done to support it. I'm hoping now that we have DaVinci on on iPad, we have DaVinci on Mac OS that we did that, you know, a black magic starts focusing on windows on arm or start, at least I, thinks I, about I options. I think that's still going to be a hurdle until we see a few more like until we see a little bit more of a push, we've got a good windows on arm solution from Lenovo. Yes. The yoga. Yeah. Did we have one from HP? I can't remember. I don't. Yeah. I haven't been, I haven't really kept up with, uh, with HP's uh, solutions, but, but uh, I, I think when, when we get another year of Microsoft playing in this space and we get the next generation of SOCs from Qualcomm, Mm-hmm. I feel like that will be enough of a nudge that, because uh, again, DaVinci, uh, DaVinci Resolve, I mean, this is a smaller company compared to like Adobe. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a different business model and a different focus. So I think they need to see enough interest from um, a, a healthy enough user base before they can make investment. that transition. But yeah, I'm, it's a big, it's a big investment ready. for them. Yeah. I am ready to buy another license of DaVinci Resolve that'll play on Windows on ARM. As soon as they're ready to sell it to me, I'm mm-hmm. ready to buy it. I, um, I'm, I'm having, with you. Having those capabilities is, is gonna be phenomenal. But I do believe that we'll probably need to see one more generation of this hardware trickle out. Before Where we are now is way better than before, but we, st- yeah, we still, this is why I'm excited to see what, what they do with Orion and what they teased us with last year and hopefully they do yeah. deliver with this. And in the meantime, the, I can use Caden Live. <laughs> no, no, I, lo- I I really like it, and um, so keep it keep an eye out there on on Juan's sh- uh, channel, and of course the Patreon if you'd like to check that out. Um, I know it's still. I mean, actually, we're doing it on Thursday. We're back to our normal time. Um, yeah. Any any other videos dropping this week from you? Uh, on so the, uh, uh, w- the uh, I finally put out the actual review review on. I saw the Yolanzi one tripod. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the video died immediately on YouTube. Like I was two hours into publishing and it had like a hundred views. So that video's dead. 
YouTube basically just said F off and we hate you. Okay. Um, I'm a little nervous because I was going to put out a Sony video tomorrow, but now oh, I'm, I'm wondering like maybe I should just let this week rest and I'll put it out next week because YouTube's being stupid. I, I, but I do have a video. It's pre, or it's early access on the Patreon right now. It's the external monitor tour. Yeah. And then uh, I, I want to do just a little quick follow up, but I might not make it a video. Uh, just because this this Yulanzi tripod video did so poorly, um, but I want to do a quick follow up on the new firmware update for the Rode Wireless Go Two. It's a really big update for these little wireless mics. Real? Oh, okay. I didn't even know. I, it's I did, it's a I big never... deal. Okay. It's a real big deal. Okay. Do the okay. update, TK, and you <laughs> will know what I'm talking about. I um, will connect them to my phone and up. Uh, well, actually, no. I could just do it on my PC. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. Part. Yeah, yeah, I, I just I, I got the PC but, set but up. But run just... the update on run the update on your PC, and then connect the transmitters to your phone. Wire wirelessly or wired? Wired. Oh, okay, it was like okay. it was like you were like. Do, but... Do, but do that. Okay. And you'll know what I'm talking. Why this is such a big deal? It's it's a very big update. Okay. It's okay. Very important that you you, do you gotta what I'm love you, you you gotta love yeah. Um, I, I was... cannot stress enough, TK. Fine. <laughs> I just, I got, you know, I've got, I, I've got a I couple got of things going right on, there. but yeah, but it was really disheartening because I put a lot of work into getting some like good outdoor shots and like, this is an incredible tripod. Me, me. Okay. So and maybe this, just, um, have you ever had it uh, thought about it when, with videos that do that, that do perform that badly or something like that, uh, I've taken it offline and just restart it fresh and relaunch it on a separate day. I might. It doesn't I, but, hurt, but right? I mean, like, if it's not moving, it's not moving, right? What, what's the worst that I mean, could happen? Let me let me look it up now because I I don't I don't think it's three hundred views. It it's one hundred and sixty thousand subscribers, and it would publish earlier in the day. It's got three hundred views. I so. I would probably yeah maybe maybe take it down, give it a couple of days, and then republish it. But like fresh, upload again, do all but of the that thing stuff is it. It, and, and please pardon and anyone who's listening to this, if there are kids around, to cover their ears right now, because I'm about to say a naughty word. It fucks with my review, my review release schedule. Yeah. Because, like, I'm into next week producing stuff. And having to babysit and manage YouTube, killing one of my videos, fucks my entire schedule for next week. Because I'm not trying to put out 10 videos in seven days. I'm trying. Yeah, I was that's trying way, to do, way yeah. worse for your YouTube metrics to this, do that. Too. This week has so. been a tough week. This has been like the back to back to back week. Three days in a row, I dropped the video. Like it was, I felt like crap. I think I maybe broken something, but it seemed like, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it, you may, I mean, it may end up getting, uh, catching wind, maybe some uh, playing a little bit with the uh, thumbnail and the, and the title I, that I maybe... heard he did all that. I even okay. I've swapped thumbnails. I've swapped titles. It's gotten no other views. These 300 views have literally been like from Mastodon and Instagram. Like I can almost track one to one where I got 20 more views because I shared it on Twitter. Like I, I'm so tired of playing this stupid game with YouTube. Like I, I've got a week of videos like. Sony Xperia 1, 80,000 views. Sony Xperia 1, 50,000 views. Uh, Infinix Note 30 Pro, 20,000 views on an Infinix from a North American reviewer. That's pretty good. Yeah. Ulanzi video tripod, travel tripod, lifestyle, fun, accessories, 300 views. So fuck that. <laughs> I mean, come I on. Maybe maybe better off. You know what I'm saying. Since you're doing the uh, oh no, the video's already done. I was gonna say if you if you go if you're gonna do the the display uh, walkthrough is in, you know integrate it into that. Make it a make it a an accessory, no. a good accessory. But no, no, we'll see. No, because the whole purpose of doing that external monitor video was to do the same thing that I did with the camera uh, tour is to make it a more streamlined feature focus. We're, we're really looking at the individual pieces and this is how you use it. So I don't wanna water down another video with other gadgets and products and things like that. It doesn't have anything to do with that. They, they're completely uh, no, no. separate. I, topics, I, I, so. I wasn't referencing it in that manner. What I meant to say is like, uh, there's, there's, there's something to be said about uh, product placement, but from your really good videos that perform where the product is also showcased, you can put a card that for people that are interested in that tri a tripod, they can jump into your other video. Yeah, my card sets don't 
do Both anything. Cost, yeah. Again, I mean, like all, all of this is like whether or not the audience is motivated to regarding to yeah. act. Sure. But again, it's like I, I can do that and I'll probably get a couple hundred views. On, if, if I put it into a video that hits hard, like if I put it into like a full Xperia 1 Mark V Accessories. review, then I oh. can card link that and I'll probably get a couple hundred views out of a card. But the main source of that traffic is whether or not YouTube actually sends my video to my subscribers. And I see 300 views after a day. I know for a fact YouTube did not send this to any of my subscribers. So I'm not going to try and dance through hoops. I'm probably going to pull the video tomorrow uh, and, and like try and set it back up and send it back out. Um, Gary, for uh, Patreon, I, I do a completely separate 4K video. So they, that's on a totally different channel. So the Patreon views, I don't track at all. Um, let me just see. I think I've got 30 views on the it's Patreon a... video. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've got thir- uh, 28. I've got 28 views just from this afternoon. But, um, you know, obviously the Patreon audience is a lot smaller. And even patrons will often go and see the main public video. Um, uh, so, unfortunately, that's a different metric than what's going on here. So it, it, it's... Sorry. It's dumb. Yeah. It is. No, I know. I know. Uh, it, it's tough. It's tough, especially when with it's, but things that make sense uh, and, and kit that we actually love and enjoy using. Uh, it's hard when, it, you know, YouTube doesn't actually share the same. The, at oh, least Michael, Michael try... Peppertech, I mean, that's that's fair because I hate making thumbnails. Um, one, one thing I notice is the text gets partially cut off with the thumbnail and maybe shortening the title could help. I, I, I mean, Sure. I, I, there are a bunch of things that I think I could be doing, spending even more time making thumbnails and looking at pro- descriptions. I have 160,000 dis- uh, subscribers. I know many of them have smashed that bell icon. I don't know how many, but I know a significant number of people have. At 300 views, whether or not people are really interested in the specific title Yulonzi video tripod, I should have a handful more people interested in checking out some of my thoughts on a photography accessory. The last photo accessory video I did was a roundup on Pixel 7 Pro vlogging equipment. <laughs> like how to turn a phone into a vlogging champ. And that has 8,000 views. I knew that video was never going to be one of my hardest hitting videos. I'm talking about phone mounts for vlogging. 8,000 views. Before that, I've got the Ceramonic mics are at 2,000 views. I knew that was going to be a really low viewed video. Um, DaVinci Resolve AI subtitles, 12,000 views. (laughs) At some point, it really doesn't fucking matter how good my thumbnail is, or if I'm using the right keywords, or what what kind of SEO. Like, no. There is a community of people out there that would be interested in the absolute lightest video travel tripod available to them. And YouTube is not sending my video out to those folks, and is not sending out my video to my own subscribers. So there's no way to win that. There's no Mm. way to get around the Google algorithm. This is so far beyond like, well, just make videos that engage your audience. I am. My audience would be interested in that. At least 2,000 people in my audience would probably care about this tripod. But I know for a fact that it's not a part of their feed. Like, I know for, there's no other way to explain this kind of behavior with people who would subscribe to a channel like mine. Um, One inch camera sensor pros and cons. The two duo of those videos is now over 15,000 views. Yeah. Uh, Roked Mm -hmm. max AR AR, AR glasses, 20,000 views. Vivo V27, 7,000 views. Like that's, that's some BS. So yeah, well, I, I, I might try and pull it. Maybe I'll try and like republish over the weekend, but like this is going to be a three day weekend. So I'm, I'm almost positive. This is just going to be a, a fucking waste. Oh, that's right. It's a holiday. People are going to be traveling. People are already traveling. 
Forgot about that part. Yep. yep. Speaking of the holiday, what you doing? I don't know. I might I might cancel this week's podcast and just take a day off. I we'll I, I, I I called it a, a good day for a BBQ with the fam uh, down by the, you know, whatever, man. I think it sounds like a Lex and I have been doing real well making some sliders and we might we might do like like late lunch, early dinner, just make a bunch of little uh Colby Jack cheeseburger nice. sliders. Yeah. You guys have anything anything fun coming up? Uh, honestly, not to kind of bore everybody. Uh, we're actually having some work done at the house. We have a leakage that we need to fix. So this weekend oh, no. is uh, some repair. It's a, some it's repair. A, it's a practical. It's weekend. a very practical. And um, sadly, right after that, uh, on Tuesday, I'm jetting back to the East Coast for a few days. So, Yeah. It's, a, it's it's nice, but it's not a four day weekend for me. Unfortunately, it's a three day weekend because I I'm still working tomorrow. They drop stuff, and then you know Monday we're probably just gonna relax and uh, hopefully things. I'm hoping they're able to figure out what the problem is and fix it on Sunday because if it's not, then this could it could spill over to Monday and stuff. But otherwise, you know, staying in town, kicking it, may may do some thinking about planning some stuff for the summer. We need to do some vacation. Like an actual vacation, yeah. vacation with the fam. Uh, what you know, Omar's school finishes next week. He's going to be home. Um, I'm actually starting to set up and try to figure out very good um, getting him to help me edit. I want to get him into uh, into hey, get his hands put busy. Him, put him to work. Well, I mean, there's yeah. no better way to learn it than to do it, really. Um, and it'll help uh, not only get it, get it there. And if there is a few things that we do get invited to that. If they don't mind, I'd love to be able to bring it with me during the summer when he is, uh, he's not in school. So, yeah. That's good. I like that. Dude, yeah. I mean, he, he would love it. He would love it. He'll see. He'll, he'll get exposed to a lot of good stuff if, I, if we can do that. But uh, for me, uh, this week, I, I had one more video on the uh, Ear 2, the, the Nothing Ear 2. And um, honestly, every time I was ready to start editing to, to push it, I, I had the Sony video that I need to push that I have. Mm -hmm. And I still have one more Sony video, the, the photography uh, video that I didn't get a chance to push out yet. So that'll hopefully be for next week. Um, and then, you know, whatever's happening next week, uh, there'll be some content coming out from that as well. But yeah, trying to keep it... Um, actually, I'll, I'll be honest with this. I'm, I'm looking forward to having just a kind of a quiet day tomorrow, just do regular stuff work. Um, this back-to-back -back three days in a row embargo is kind of knocking me. I, was like, <laughs> I know. I've like, been kicking no. some ass, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, none of my videos were all at the embargo time. They were always like about three hours or so late. But like, especially with the... Um, uh, especially with the Edge 2023, uh, it, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of components. There's a lot of aspects mm -hmm. to it. It's not just one trick pony kind of thing. And for me, like I said, ready for just, yeah, I love to champion that conversation. I was talking to somebody at my son's karate class yesterday, and I said, I'm using a moto. And the lady looked at me. She said, what is a moto? And I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I said, do you remember the droid? She's like, you mean the the old moto that Moto Motorola? I said, yeah, they're still around. They still make phones. He's like, oh, because uh, I walked but into like a conversation. Spoon feed them. All well, that. It's actually I, become my mom's I, favorite game is talking to women her age and like, oh, what's your phone? It's a OnePlus. And then she just stops talking, and she doesn't help them at all. Help them get to the. Oh, but but, but what? But what is it? But, it's a OnePlus. It, but it's. I mean, that's not an iPhone. That's right. It's, it's a, a plus. plus. It's the plus so model. Is that like a is that like a Samsung? No. Yeah. The conversation I walked into yesterday plus. was a was a Samsung versus iPhone conversation. And, oh, fun. Uh, and then I walked into that and I was like, "Yeah, I use Moto, but thank you." <laughs> it's great. But yes, I'm glad so we got this chat. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I do want to say first and foremost, obviously, thank you very much for everybody for hanging out with us on this beautiful Thursday. Um, next week's show may have a slightly different timeline, but we're going to work it out. We'll make yeah, sure to give we'll you guys another out. good show. Uh, the audio version of the podcast will be available hopefully within the next 24 hours. Um, of course, links to all of our socials in, in the in the description here, as well as the show notes. Make sure to check out Juan's Patreon for some of that exclusive behind the scenes stuff uh, that gets posted there actually ahead of the the the, the video he was I did talking an about the unboxing, unboxing video. I know, like I never seriously, do unboxing video like. Like, how does it feel in the hand? That's the question I want the answer yeah, to. Yeah, it's really... Uh, yeah, especially with... That's you probably know, why my videos don't get very many views is because I don't talk about hand feel. Start with the video. Start in the beginning of the video. Just say, hey, look, it feels great in the hand. No cuts. Look. 
that kind of conversation, you'll be fine. Um, but make sure, uh, actually, we'll see. We'll see if Monday um, uh, the SGGQ will be in there. Make sure to check out Juan's socials. I'm sure he'll post something if there if there is no show. But otherwise, there'll be an SGGQ on Monday, and hopefully we'll catch up with you guys next week for the best of our week on another episode there. So be safe, stay safe. Thank you for everybody for hanging out with us, and we will see you 